All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And greetings to all. It's our Friday show. I'm excited. Thank you, folks. Please, please, please be seated. This is a... Oh, now the people who are seated are standing. All right, now the people who are standing are sitting. I, I can't... I, we can keep going. Thank you. Please, folks, we've got a show to do. And I very much appreciate all the love. Albert is here. Albert, he is thank the commissioner you. of Mark's Madness and all things sports on the show. We will check in with him. Kim watching news Kim, events, the breaking news, the existing news, the news that broke and is now breaking in different ways. Uh, it, it, we've got it all covered for you. Florida is a big Friday segment we do here. We call it Friday Fabulous Florida. And it is uh, filled with dark weird Florida stuff today. I've got a law and disorder that I want to get in in the first half hour. I've got some Trump news. I've got some donor news. And William Lundgren is here. A lot of our regulars are in the live chat. We appreciate all of you who uh, make listening to or watching our show part of your routine. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting. And there's pretty, pretty, pretty big news. In March Madness, everyone. So, I really do want to, before I get to politics and Trump and everything that's going on, I have some remarkable political stuff in law and disorder. A revelation in the boat accident and bridge collapse. I mean, I have serious news to get to. But more serious and what's grabbed national attention more than anything else, maybe, is uh, Mark's Madness, which is going down. And the commission of Mark's Madness is here, as I mentioned, Albert. We're in the Elite Eight. I don't need to tell any of you that. Albert, just thank to you. Just kind of familiarize newcomers with it. Albert, yesterday was a pretty big showdown, and I think there was an upset. Tell us what happened yesterday. Yeah, so the Sweet 16 wrapped up yesterday. Actually, last night, I wrapped up the community voting, which you could do on our YouTube channel in the community tab. And uh, our pal, Jim Avila, his drop, which is a 26 seed one, and it wasn't even close. So Wow, that's the 30. There's always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. So that drop beat, what was the drop it beat? My bad, I'm sorry, which is probably my wow, favorite Wow, yeah. My bad, I'm sorry. That's an extra, I think that's an upset. That's an outright upset. So he in, is. In, in, in silent, not actually not silent protest, and just in protest, I might just be using that drop all day today. Like, even more <laughs> so. I'm very disappointed. Now. What? Uh, that's a Cinderella story drop, is the 30%, 35% idiots. Yeah, uh, what was it? A, a, a note on that is that here's our new standings. Oh, these and are the standings we overall. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah, you were talking yesterday that Daniel Martin was on top, which he's still close, but Sally Costa is the new number one in our standings, and she actually has 30 to 35% idiots. Sally, look mm. at you. Sally Costa's got 30 to 35%. So. As long as 30 to 35 percent idiots is alive, Sally is alive. And I don't see, I'm looking at all the other picks, and it looked like you can see under pick champion, the one on the, the column on the right, good day, sir. Chit, chit, chit has a lot. A lot of people have picked chit, chit, chit to go all the way. In fact, the only other 30 to 35 percent idiots I can see is from Cheryl Peterson. Wow. Yeah. This I'm going to feel incredible. bad if it doesn't go all the way because then I, I'll feel like I failed you. Oh, there's SR Donner uh, down the... Well, you don't have anything to do with it, Kim. I mean, it's nice that you've claimed ownership. It is you, your voice. But, I mean, you don't have responsibility. You shouldn't feel bad if it doesn't do well. You can feel bad about a lot of other stuff, I think. But you don't have to feel bad about that. <laughs> oh, great. Right. Thank now, you. Um, let, but there was somebody else, Albert. Did you see somebody yeah, else? Yeah, SR has, Donner here also has 30 to 35%. Yeah, so, idiots. again, oh. of, uh, there are really only three people who picked 30 to 35% to go all the way. But... It looks like there's the, always been in this country 30 to 35 percent idiots. It's the Cinderella story so far. How is my Courtney doing, Albert? Yeah, Courtney is slowly dropping, which is yeah, uh, like we all are. Empty, but um, she's still close. I think it's top 10 if, I, if I'm counting with just uh, the eye yeah, test here. Looks, she with looks a, like there's a there's 10. quite a tie, yeah, quite a tie for 
Daniel Martin is in second. I mean, you know, you, uh, I mean, you did note that he was there only a short time in first place, but uh, he hasn't fallen far. Uh, Short lived, but only one point off. So that's uh, important. Even for a lot of you who are below, just look at your best possible if you're participating. That's what's going to keep you hope here. Best yeah, and I, and I would say one last thing about uh, these showdowns. And that is, it's funny that in sports generally, in team sports, often you will reach moments in a season that are not really by script the ultimate moment. Like, let's say in the Super Bowl, uh, prior to the Super Bowl, you might have the two teams that everybody feels should be in the Super Bowl. They'll make it to the Super Bowl. They, they, they won't be anywhere near the Super Bowl, but they, they play off earlier in the season. Now, I'm not making this point very clear, Commission. No. What I'm trying to say like is... The, like the Chiefs, the Chiefs and the Bills <laughs> a couple years ago, what? Mark? Yes, thank you. Like the Chiefs yeah. and Bills. Perfect example. And all I'm saying is today... We have a moment like that where two that may be picked by many to go all the way face off against each other. It's like the Super Bowl. This is today's Mark's Madness. Let's now, do it. I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. These are, I, it's like picking between children, Kamish. You'll either pick and vote for. Good day, sir. Or. You'll vote for. Ch-ch-ch- oh my God! Uh, how do you it's choose? going going off. Good day, sir. Or Ch-ch-ch-ch- it's good day, sir. Or chit chit chit. You vote right now in the chat, or until midnight tonight in the community section on YouTube. Good luck! <laughs> oh, wow. I have no idea what's going to go on or happen for that. So. I think Kamish, the chit, chit, chit is unstoppable. I really do. First of all, they shouldn't, but people do associate Kim with it. And I understand why. It's Kim's voice, but you have to evaluate it as a drop, just evaluate it on its own, which is why I don't think Kim should take responsibility or feel bad if it doesn't do well. It's just a, it's just a sound. It's a drop. It was a moment. I got an email from a, a person asking what it means. They said, I looked it up in Urban Dictionary. I can't find it anywhere. I don't know what it means. I said, it's because it just came out of my mouth one day in a a horrible display of complete uh, disrespect to Mark Thompson. Yeah, it was right. It was born out of a totally embarrassing moment. Yeah, it uh, was. But 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 Kim is loved, and it has turned into a great drop, and we love it. And... I mean, it's we don't associate it with the moment anymore. We just kind mm-hmm. of uh, play the drop and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but I do love the fact that it is picked by many to yeah. go all the way. So again, right now in the chat, in the live chat, you'll vote for a good day, sir, good day, or sir. you'll vote for chit, chit, chit. Now, uh, you can vote until midnight tonight, and it's not the only thing we're doing, but we are watching closely Mark's Madness, so um, please vote responsibly, everyone. The Mark Thompson Show. Last night, it's being uh, talked about as a huge event, because it was a huge event. All the all the ghosts of President's past got together <laughs> on stage there with the, uh, with the ghost of President Future. I guess that would be Biden. And so uh, 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 they, they made quite the show. Albert, do you have uh, shots of them, or do you have a... There you go. That doesn't look like one of them, but it must be a go ahead. Let's play a little bit of this and you'll see. Turn to the news here with President Biden's star studded fundraiser at Radio City Music Hall last night. The Biden campaign says it raised more than twenty six million dollars at the event. Wow. Of five thousand. There they are. People attended. It was the Rat Pack of the Democratic Party, everybody. Special guests, Queen Latifah, Lizzo, Ben Platt all performed. The highlight of the fundraiser, though, a conversation between President Biden and former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. The discussion was moderated by late night host Stephen Colbert. The presidents talk about a wide range of issues, including the war in Gaza and the need to protect our democracy. They also took some jabs at former president and presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump. The event was met with pro-Palestinian protesters, some of whom interrupted that conversation among the presidents. A large group also marched outside of Radio City Music Hall, calling for an end to the war in Gaza. Let's bring in White House correspondent for Reuters. 
Well, I, mm-hmm. I, I, so there's nothing from inside. They don't have any actual uh, sound or video from inside the event, Albert. Nothing from. It, it's in the middle. Let me let me grab it. If, uh, yeah, that's what yeah. I really wanted. Yeah, I was yeah. reading that. Um, Colbert said they've got three presidents in New York, and not one of them is here for a court hearing. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Well, just be, speaking of the court hearing, I will get to Trump and uh, what he is doing now in lashing out against the judge's daughter, the very judge who, mm. as you know, imposed a gag order upon him. But I wanted to see, just as we're on it, the a little bit of the three presidents on stage, just a, a minute or two. So, look, this is a fundraiser. It was an extraordinary night. I think you could get your picture taken with all three for some, you know, huge donation. Sure. Uh, and... Uh, the the money part of the whole equation, which is related to the donation issues last night, meaning the the whole idea of this thing last night was to raise money. So the whole issue of donations, how much you have, you have small donor donations, you have corporate donations, et cetera, uh, that leaves Biden ahead. So even as he is soft in polls, he is pretty robust in terms of fundraising, and this didn't hurt. They raised $25 million, as you heard. And so 26 looks like they threw in an extra million there. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah, million funny here, because million there. Yeah. I saw a story come out today that not to be, you know, you can't have something good happen without Trump trying to outdo you. Right. So apparently they're doing this Palm Springs fundraiser in April for Trump. And it's um, being hosted by billionaire John Paulson, who says It doesn't matter that they raised $26 million at Radio City Music Hall because we have already raised even more than that, $33 million for our Palm Springs event. So, nani, nani, nah. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Good day, sir. (laughs) Okay. Wow. There you have it. Uh, Here's a little bit of what was going on inside Radio City Music Hall last night with the Yeah, so there's only one clip, and this is the only clip that made it out of this uh, event. Okay. All right. Here we go. Can voters trust a presidential candidate who has not won a single Trump International Golf Club trophy? At long last, sir, have you no chip shot? Well, look, I'd be happy to play. I told him this before when he came into the Oval, when he was being, before he got sworn in. I said, I'll give you three strokes if you carry your own bag. According to reporters in the room, all three presidents made the case that Trump presents a dangerous threat to American democracy. But they also tried to energize voters around Biden's record, highlighting. Yeah, I mean, that's good. I mean, there's, I just saw the shot of the uh, uh, prescription Medicine. drugs. I mean, the mm-hmm. fact is you get a lot of populist talk, of course, from the GOP, a lot of populist talk from Donald Trump. He does have a an uncanny ability to appeal to the base, the base of all of us, the the hate, the anger, but also he makes promises, infrastructure promises. And as I just mentioned, apropos of prescription drugs, he had promised that we'd see negotiation on prescription drugs. There, we, Why are we charged so much for prescription drugs in this country? This is something that has outraged Americans for years. We pay more for prescription medications in America than they do anywhere else in the world. Why is that? So for all the talk, Biden actually did get it through with the legislation. There are 10, I would like to have seen more, but there are 10 prescription medicines that are allocated for negotiation with Medicare and with the US government such that the cost of those medicines will be reduced to Americans. That is something that Biden did. So Biden actually did deliver an infrastructure plan. Again, might have liked to have seen it have more, but he got it through and you know with this razor thin majority that they had at the time so uh i'm interesting to hear that they touched on these things make sense that they would touch on these things and this event unprecedented so really quite interesting now mentioning again fundraising and billionaires because kim mentioned this palm springs event Hmm. i think it's worth noting something uh quite extraordinary the mark thompson show since so much is made of and should be made of donations to political parties and political candidates in a nation that has a political system awash in money the u.s huge issues that our political system i think is plagued with 
But this is the political system we have. So a lot is made of how much money is raised and where that money comes from. So the day after the mob stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, Nelson Peltz, who is a GOP mega donor billionaire, called the insurrection a disgrace, expressed remorse for voting for Donald Trump. I'm sorry I did that, he said, meaning that he voted for Trump. There were a lot of other billionaires who stepped forward and said, I'll never again be part of this man and those who had anything to do with endorsing the attempted insurrection on January 6th. Many billionaires stepped forward. The uh, reality is that times have changed. And now, in the fullness of time, as the phrase goes, and with Trump having essentially established himself as the candidate for the GOP, the very man that I quoted, or who I quoted, Nelson Peltz, the billionaire, is now out in front on Donald Trump, along with other billionaires. It was earlier this month that Peltz had breakfast with Trump, along with Steve Wynn, the hotelier, uh, Elon Musk, the Marvel chairman, former Marvel chairman, Isaac Perlmutter, Peltz held that breakfast at his Palm Beach oceanfront mansion. He's an activist investor. He's in a battle over Disney right now, Peltz is. And now he says he will probably vote for Donald Trump and the Mm -hmm. GOP candidate as embodied by Trump. So as, again, this is a key point, as the Nikki Haley's of the world of the DeSantis's of the world, as they melt away and you're left with Trump, these GOP mega donors who had sworn they would never support Donald Trump after the attempted insurrection on January 6th, they're all now back on board. Can you think of why? Because they want the one thing that they know Trump will deliver. And it has nothing to do with women's reproductive rights, and it has nothing to do with voting rights, And it has nothing to do with gay education in school or any of the other wedge issues. It has nothing to do with uh, Black Lives Matter. It has to do with tax cuts. Mm -hmm. They do not want further taxes on billionaires. And that is something that Biden is pledged to do. Now, I don't know that Biden will actually get that legislation through. But clearly, billionaires feel that is the impending reality in a Biden administration. They know that whether or not he'll actually get the legislation passed, he's gonna try to get it passed. And so in that spirit, they support Trump. They do not, and actually they do fear Biden's tax agenda. So these huge fortunes that have grown even bigger during COVID, now even post COVID, the market's on a run. These billionaires have done well and Biden has promised to raise many taxes on these billionaires. So they, as a class, the billionaire class, feels threatened by Joe Biden. So now they are back in behind Trump. Some of them are not enthusiastic supporters of Donald Trump, but they're there with their money. Nonetheless, in fact, uh, Kim, you had those numbers. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing the way big money flocks to Trump to try to prevent those tax cuts that they fear from going through. It's just sad that, and I, maybe it's such a naive view for me to take. And I realize it's not the way the world works, but it's just so sad to me that money is more important than the tenets and principles of America. Oh, well, I mean, this is, uh, this is something you can, I think, argue about. You can also have reasonable disagreements about in fact you could have a reasonable disagreement about the tenets of america are you know i'm so i understand what you're saying that there is something that was so loathsome in that january 6th attempted insurrection uh, the apparent calls for violence the attempt to overthrow a legitimate vote 
through all the means that we've discussed here ad nauseum have been discussed everywhere. Uh, I get what you're saying. Like that should be a bridge too far. Why would you ever want to sign on to that again? Yeah. But when it's money, money rules the day. And again, I think one of the astounding things about this is that a lot of this billionaire money that's flowing into the Trump campaign because they want to avoid the feared Biden tax increases on the billionaire class, a lot of that money is going not to advertising, not to getting messages out. They're, it's going to pay off lawyers. Mm -hmm. It's going to help Trump out of his legal hole. As you know, the RNC change of leadership at the top, Laura Trump, she's already said that they're funneling a lot of money to Donald Trump's legal efforts. So uh, this is where a lot of that billionaire money is going. And this is, again, a robust pipeline of money that will continue into Donald Trump for some time. So that's the latest on the Mark Thompson show on the billionaire money, which continues in. By the way, I got a um, I got a I've received a lot of positive letters. <laughs> yeah, I got an I got an email. It I thought was, you, were gonna um, say you got a, a donation from one of these uh, elite donors. Oh, is that right? Wait a minute. I'll, let me stop, I'll stop anything for a donation. We're crowdfunded. I need to stop everything for no, a donation. No, no, I thought you were going to mention it. But yeah, we, we are uh, on PayPal and, and Patreon if you are interested. Oh, I see. If well, if there is anyone who wants to support us, join yeah. our crew. Yeah, you can join our crew through Patreon or PayPal. Support us. That way, that community of supporters, we roll and scroll those names at the end of every show because we're so grateful. Really, without you guys, we don't exist. So, and if you're um, a multi-billion dollar mega donor, well, we'll wow. take that too. Yeah. Yeah. Put us in your, um, in your living trust or whatever those things are called. <laughs> uh, the, just because you mentioned that, Albert, um, thank you for, uh, for mentioning Albert, that. thank you. Yeah. Um, Somebody asking about merch. We um, we do have a Mark's Madness hat, which should be on the merch site. Maybe you can go there, Albert, and see if it's still there. It should be. Um, Susie sent us. Uh, she upgraded her. Let me just see. Susie was so cool. Got a couple of, I don't mean to stop the whole show down for this, but I really do appreciate it. Mary is a new uh, Patreon member. So thank you, Mary. Big shout out. Big shout out to you. Welcome aboard, Mary. Yeah, Mary, that's a very cool thing. And uh, Susie edited her membership. I just got, this is the way it, it comes to me. <laughs> Upgraded Whoa. from $25 a month to $45 a month. Susie. Big shout out. Big sh I mean. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. That does make me want to cry. That is really cool. Yeah. Thank you. I bought a lottery ticket for you. No bueno, says Harry. Thank you. <laughs> But uh, I said, thank you so much for um, upgrading the membership to Susie. And she said, you're very welcome. I appreciate you all, including your regular contributors and guests. The show is wonderfully unique with smart, thoughtful conversations. You provide timely information and manage to deftly combine all that with fun and funny segments. News and info as well. So awesome. Keep up the great work. There's never been anything I really, like this. I really do miss Jim Avila. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, but Avila is alive in uh, Mark's Madness. Very, very cool, Susie. Thank you for that. I also got another uh, listener. I've received a lot of positive letters. Yeah, I got this a um, on the Trump stock. Um, oh, thank you for the yeah. For, we'll, we'll get back to the merch stuff in a second. Um, on the Trump stock, which. Um, as you know, Open Strong seemed to get a lot of good pub around it. But as I mentioned to you, unless you were part of the SPAC, meaning you got into you know the investment pre-IPO, I don't see how you made money on it. I mean, you maybe in the first hour you could have made money, but th after that it dropped, and, and so you weren't. It, it came in seventy-ish, and now it's sort of hovering in the sixties. And today the market's closed. But anyway, the stock will be under thirty dollars in less than ninety days. This guy says. Hmm. However, because he will receive an exception, 45, meaning Trump, will have cashed out a long time ago. It's not necessarily investors, quote, that will lose money. It is those who put the money in up front, knowing that this is a payoff to 45. Can you say 
Qatar. That's really interesting. And it's possible that foreign money flowed into that SPAC. It was really not a very transparent process. The game is as old as the market, he says. What do you think SPACs truly are? Look at the investors. It's simply a money transfer. Wow. So that really could be a Qatari payoff or a Saudi payoff. Anyway, that was, I thought, an interesting comment. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I will say about him dumping stocks he, and getting the exception is that uh, other investors could sue if that were the case. You know, um, you begin to affect uh, the viability of of the rest of the company stock. So, you know, whatever stock he retains, if you want to think of it that way, it, it it's pretty much headed toward worthless. Now, I understand it's likely headed to, toward worthless anyway, but what I'm saying is it, it would hasten its drop. So I, I don't know about that. I love your backdoor narrative. I think that's exactly right. And David K. Johnston laid out a backdoor theory as well, the way he can sell to a short seller and sort of work a backroom deal. You should go back and look at that video. Wes, thank you for the $5 super sticker. Out. Thank you to everybody who supports us all the ways you do. Love it, appreciate it, and thank you. The Mark Thompson Show. I um, wanted to do some lawn disorder. Do I have time? God, it's just getting so late already. Friday is time? just so much yeah. fun. We do? Yeah. Uh, Albert, um, why not? Uh, let's. I'll do some lawn disorder. We'll update Mark's Madness. We'll do Kim's News. Then we'll do Florida. Then we've got Shore. Then we've got the Culture Blaster. It's going to be amazing. I mean, there's never been anything like there's this. There's never been anything like this. Um, Edward Lee says this before we start lawn disorder. My bad. I'm sorry. But how is Jim's drop doing so well? <laughs> <laughs> what? There's never been anything like this. That drop is barely ever used. Ridiculous. Good day, sir. Yeah. It is true that that 30% uh, drop. There's always been in this country 30 to 35% idiots. We almost never use it. And yet it is the Cinderella story of Mark's Madness now. Now, good day, sir. Good day, sir. Which is in the hunt right now is used all the time. What? Yeah, used all the time. And... Uh, the chit chit chit, which is uh, in the hunt as chit, well, chit, and chit. picked by many to win it all, is used all the time. There's no predicting it. What can I tell you, Edward? It's um, it, the people have spoken, Edward. The yeah, so yeah, the people have spoken. Thank big you. Big shout That's out, vote. But uh, thank you for the uh, super chat and the super sticker, Wes yeah. and Edward, both and all of you who help every day. All right, without any further delay, uh, here it is. This is Law and Disorder. In the criminal justice system, the people pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address, and men who don't care are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, your poison, your trouble, your bad news. These are their stories. Well, it is um it's happening. The GOP official who claimed that the 2020 election was stolen because of voter fraud. He himself voted illegally nine times. What? What a dummy. A Georgia Republican official who pushed false claims that the 2020 election was stolen was found to have himself voted illegally nine times, according to a judge. Good day, sir! Well, at least he can say he wasn't lying when he was talking about election fraud. He knew firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, there's election fraud. I know, because I did it. Ooh, yeah, I did it a, a wild bunch. idea, but it just might work. <laughs> In order to penetrate the election fraud conspiracy, That's I right. myself had to be an election fraudster. <laughs> Brian Pritchard, the first vice chairman of the Georgia Republican Party, was ordered to pay a $5,000 fine. So you can see the fines are not. They, they actually, I think the way it works is they charge you $500 per illegal vote. So when you added them all up, it comes to 5000 plus some kind of additional, you know, processing fees, you know, uh, shipping and handling. Um, so yes, uh, somehow uh, Ticketmaster made off with some profit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, they call them investigative costs, but that's what they are, like yeah. administrative costs. Anyway, um, he had been sentenced in 1996 to three years probation for felony check forgery charges. So this guy is a real day at the beach. And he His was what? 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 
um, position so he, did he how old? So he was the um, uh, uh, he was a Georgia Republican uh, election official, uh, oh. a, a Georgia Republican official. I'm sorry, uh, he was vice chairman of the Georgia Republican Party. Vice with chairman. A, okay, with so he a wasn't check chairman. fraud conviction. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, to be, we're not too discerning who we put in charge of the party, huh? Uh, he passed the background check. Yeah, okay. uh, but I, but, uh, but now, I mean, I don't mean, you know, I try to speak fairly toward yeah. everyone. I mean, it's possible that he, this is 1996, that he was uh, charged and he, right. you know, was convicted of the forgery hmm. uh, charges, uh, but he was put on probation. You know what I mean? In other words, he, paid his debt to society, everyone, so he can continue on. I mean, again, I'm just trying to be fair, but, um, but clearly he violated his probation. I mean, uh, so here's what happened. His probation uh, was issued. He got three years probation for these felony check forgery uh, charges. His probation was revoked three times, okay? So he is a repeated <laughs> probation violator. Once he violated probation in 1999, after he moved to Georgia, and again in 2002 and 2004. In 2004, the judge imposed a new seven-year probationary sentence. Let's put so, him in charge of the Republican Party. Uh, well, I mean, that but, sounds but, like a great idea. And the funny thing is that <laughs> he was ineligible to vote during that period because of the felony. Okay. Oh my God. So he couldn't vote until at least 2011 in the state of Georgia, where state law there prohibits felons from voting. But Court documents show that he signed voter registration forms in 08, in which he affirmed that he was not serving a sentence for having been convicted of a felony involving moral turpitude. So he lied and signed that form. He then cast ballots in four Georgia primary and general elections in 08, as well as five special primary and general elections in 2010. There he is now. We're showing him oh to you. Oh, my God. Yeah. So... This is a guy who is a conservative talk show host. He uh, is this conservative political guy who is a hard right. He's an a, a election uh, denier pursuing the big lie, as it's called. And he, most of all, and this perhaps most ironically, he makes sort of the cornerstone of his whole deal those who vote illegally in this country. He thinks that there's this big issue of people voting illegally, and that's an effort to manipulate an election, and that's what happened the last time. This is a big part of what he says on his radio show and kind of who he is. So Pritchard himself, as it turns out, is one of those people who, uh, what can I say? Uh, clearly voted illegally and has now been found by a judge to have voted illegally and has been fined. One of the things he said is, I do not believe 81 million people voted for this guy, Joe yeah. Biden. So, huh. uh, yeah. I'm sorry, did you have something? I um, uh, Otherwise, I'm moving on. Uh, no, I just thought it was funny. Commentator said the guy voted extra to make up for lost votes. It's only fair, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. And by the way, uh, <laughs> by the way, that's I think that picture that you're showing right now, Albert, is not him. That's uh, oh. Troy Nels. That's the um, mm. that's the uh, congressman. I just glanced up. I didn't really uh, pay any attention to it. But um, Roy, uh, Troy Nels is now he's a GOP, a congressperson, Richmond, Virginia. He's under investigation by the House House Ethics Committee now. Uh, they did not specify the focus of the investigation. But it was related to, anyone, campaign finances, everybody. That's the, uh, yeah, it's always about the money. And so this is now the House ethics investigation again. Hey, Mark, it's George Santos here. Yeah, uh, George is one of them, too, who has uh, been in the, uh, in the money and the ethics investigation. So uh, that continues uh, as well. And Calvin said he was supposed to vote another 11,770 times in Georgia. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to do it, do it hard. Come on. Um, and there is uh, Matt Schlapp. Now, Matt Schlapp is he and his wife are like big GOP people in Washington. They were during the Trump administration sort of the it couple. Okay. Mm -hmm. There they are. Thank you. Matt Schlapp, he Ooh, was the a fancy chandelier there. Pro chairman, pro <laughs> Trump chairman 
of the American Conservative Union. He had uh, hugely represent, represented and leaned into everything Trump, okay? Had a big blowout with Michael Steele, the former RNC head, on the air. I think it was on, you know, now he's on MSNBC, Michael Steele. So Schlapp and he went at it on the air. In fact, to the point that and these guys used to be pals. Because remember, Michael Steele used to be a Republican. Well, he read he led the Republican Party, in effect. So they got into this food fight on MSNBC. They haven't spoken since. And he, believe me, he, as a result of that fight and as a result of his stand, became this wunderkind in the GOP. Well, things have changed. And now that uh, dude you see there on the left, uh, he was the focus of sexual assault allegations uh, by, I believe, three men. Uh, he denied the charges and actually began... Uh, to deal with this situation in a, well, in a way that was quite common, and that is he uh, bought out the defamation lawsuit and the sexual battery charges. In other words, the, I'll call him victim, who stepped forward, decided to drop the charges. And the American Conservative Union, the right-wing organization that he runs, uh, was in the background, but Schlapp was in the foreground saying, see, I told you, you know, these charges have now been dropped against me. It was all crap. But as it turns out, the Republican operative who sued him was in fact paid to drop the lawsuit. A Daily Beast did some good reporting on this, and I'm just referring to their story, and I refer you to that story as well. And it seems as though this is one of those things that bubbles to the surface and you make a deal that the victim or the accuser, maybe I should call him that, uh, can only say so much in public statements. And that's exactly what happened here. So the statement on the part of the accuser is very weak sauce. No reference to you know the payoff or anything like that. As to others who have stepped forward, there have been um, accusations that they've been harassed, etc. And none of that stuff has really bubbled to the surface in the way that this first one did. But this is the statement. The claims made in my lawsuits were the result of a complete misunderstanding. This is what, the again, the accuser says now. Mm -hmm. And I regret that the lawsuit caused pain to the Schlapp family. The Schlapps have uh, advised that the statements made about me were the result of a misunderstanding which was regrettable. Neither the Schlapps nor the ACU paid me anything to dismiss my claims against them. Well, we know that that's not true now, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they just call it all a misunderstanding. Huh. Again, no fun in GOP land. In Florida, a deputy son, 10 years old, is accused of selling his father's gun to a classmate for $300. The boy exchanged the handgun for $300, and the incident was discovered after ammunition was found in the backpack of another student. That was earlier this week. He's 10 years old? Yeah, his, um, his father is deceased, and... He sold the gun to another student at Hendry, uh, I'm sorry, Country Oaks Elementary School. And they were placed under lockdown this week after the sheriff's office got this call about a suspicious incident on campus, and they discovered this ammunition in the backpack of the boy who purchased the gun. The gun was later found in his backyard under a shed, hidden with a 74-gram bag of marijuana, oh, according God. to investigators. At yeah, 10 years old. Oh, Starting man. them early in Florida. And then finally... Where are my weed smokers at? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty ugly. Not in pretty, fourth grade. Come on. Pretty ugly. Um, Mark, we're running a little late. 
How dare you, Albert, interrupt <laughs> me when I'm just picking up? I'm, I'm literally just beginning. Do you know who I am? To hit my I'm stride. Kind of a big deal. That's law and disorder for today. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on the Mark Thompson Show. All right, that's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Favorite time of year. It is. Oh, Gail Guthrie. I see. Sorry. Yeah. Gail Guthrie. Big shout out. Big shout out. Gail is HOF. She lives in the Hall of Fame of supporters alongside some others who are distinguished in the history of this show. Thank you for a $10 Super sticker today, Gail Guthrie. Big shout big out. Big shout out again. I love it. I don't know if Gail is in uh, Mark's Madness, but uh, whether she is or whether she isn't, we no. are uh, I can't we're doing it. Mark's Madness. This may be the Super Bowl of Super Bowls today, everyone. Please vote. You'll vote either for... Good day, sir. Oh, good day, sir. Or you'll vote for... Chit-chit-chit. Oh, my gosh. It's... Chit-chit-chit. It's chit 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 again. Good day, sir. Again. Chit chit chit. Or. Good day, sir. Oh, what is it going to be? You That's vote hard. until midnight tonight in the community section. Or. You vote live right now in the chat. Did I get that, something wrong? No, it's a dead heat, though. That's ah. what it is. It is a dead heat. And- oh, this is unreal. What? I'm telling you, I'm excited. Thank you, Lucy McAllister. Come on, big shout out for big Lucy. Big shout out. Thank you for a super sticker, Lucy, for a couple of bucks throwing them our way. I appreciate that. We're crowdfunded, so we like to make a big deal out of the crowd that funds, and uh, appreciate that. Uh, so, Albert, it's a dead heat. You will keep us posted on this. Yeah, one one of the drops are up fifty two percent, and the other are forty eight. I won't disclose that for YouTube, but I, everyone in the chat could see it. So uh. yeah. We don't like to influence the voting, but again, it's, uh, I mean, these are two titans going up. Chit, 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 picked by most people to win it all. Chit, chit, chit. I think up, one up, 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 just, yeah. whoever wins this one might just win it all. This might, like you said, this is the yeah. Who's going to stop him after this? Yeah. yeah. And, and Good day, sir. Good day, sir. <laughs> uh, comes in hard from last year. Chit, chit, chit is new this year. Um Anyway, uh, love it. I'm just looking at the uh, chats now. Uh, okay, well, I'll look at the chats and listen to Kim's news. We'll do that. We'll do Florida. It was 50-50 just a few minutes ago, says Daniel Martin. If You know, Albert, if anything ever to happen to you, and I certainly hope nothing does, uh, I think Daniel Martin Albert, could thank you. take over as commissioner of Mark's Madness. Yeah, do you agree with me? He gives off Steve Kornacki vibes for this, for yeah. the, at least the research and stuff and, and, and the – and he's really he's really into it. He's like I said, I got a couple emails, and he's really engaged. So we love that. Yeah, well, it, it's it, that's the kind of enthusiasm that you you really look for. In, Good in day, it. sir, is winning right now. It's fifty two to forty eight percent. Well, we just said that we didn't want to say which one was a little bit up, oh, but you I'm had to sorry, do it. Sorry, I'm time. sorry. Yeah. Kim, how are you? Kim barely listens to the show anyway, so that for her to like, it's not surprising that she missed what? that. Um, I accept, says Daniel uh, Martin. All right. Well, um, stand by. You, I guess, are the, what do they do in Miss America? You know, remember something happens to Miss America, then the other, it's a, the, the first runner up. The runner up, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's it. Good day, sir. Yeah. Didn't Good Day, sir, take the first Mark's Madness? This is a good question. It's a history question for the mm-hmm. commish. Did it? Uh, I'm not Let sure. Let me see. I uh, he can go in, go. We'll go into the Mark's Madness archives, and we will see exactly what actually won. I will do that question. as a follow up because we need to get to Florida before. Uh, we yeah, get before to, it gets to before, before it's Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you Smash need a little the baker here, like a sounder, and then we could get straight to Florida. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want to go right to Florida. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You got it. So Florida's ahead. <laughs> The Mark Thompson Show. It was great. I loved it. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. Morning. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? Stay at home and get baked. (laughs) Yeah, everybody. We're in the middle of Mark's madness, but we're also just warming up for what will be a terrific edition of Friday Fabulous Florida. 
It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. To uh, start with a bizarre one for sure that comes out of the land of Pasco County, is it? Winter Haven, Florida, anyway. It's Polk County. Wait a minute. Isn't Polk County Grady? Polk, yep, that's our yeah. pal Grady. Oh. What he's got going here <laughs> is a situation. That's our favorite sheriff, Grady. Juh. And uh, this dude in Winter Haven, Florida, had a hankering for beef jerky and pistachio nuts. And that hankering, <laughs> that desire, was so strong that he swiped more than $100 worth of that stuff from a Polk County convenience store without stopping to pay. There he Back is. to the mini mart we go in Florida, huh? Uh, yeah, he, yeah. to be fair, um, we just had a picture of him up there. Um, I just closed the tab. Let me break it back. <laughs> okay, he looks, he's got that kind of, uh, I don't, I hope you won't take this the wrong way, but sort of like a, Russian hitman kind of look. Doesn't he oh. have that sort of, right? Anton Karamfilov. Actually, he is. It sounds like he's Ukrainian, maybe Russian, whatever. But um, on the Mark Thompson booking scale meter, I'm giving him a... I'm going to give him a five, actually, everybody. I'm going to give him a five. And the reason is that he he wants the angry sort of strong man look and i think yeah. he gets it i think he achieves it so uh nice job anton they use the alternate angle too on that shot too yeah, like yes it doesn't yeah. even look like a booking photo yeah, could we get one with you maybe looking away in the distance <laughs> uh, as if you're in deep reflection yes right surveillance video showing anton Walking into a Love's truck stop, stopping to look at a sign depicting a deputy patrol car that read, free ride if you shoplift from this store. <laughs> <laughs> then he walks inside the store, continues in, grab beef jerky and pistachio nuts, and walks out. Wow. Good day, sir. Oh, mm. Anton. Come and on. Grady Judd did weigh in with a quote, and the <laughs> Grady quotes are always strong. He said... He's nuts for a nut. <laughs> <laughs> what he's got going here is a situation. I guess so. The pistachios uh, ruled the day there. Thank you, Grady. A dude accused of posing as a drug cartel captive and extorting 80000 from his wife was intended to support his drug habit. Wait, he's in Mel... Yeah. If you extort 80000 from your wife, aren't you extorting 80000 from yourself? No, I don't know how their accounts were set up, but uh, maybe he did. Uh, even when you share accounts, sometimes if you say, I'm using this money for gambling and for drugs, your other half isn't <laughs> problem so... problem with that? Yeah, yeah. might have. So <laughs> instead, he said that he was involved in uh, this drug cartel, and he extorted his wife, essentially. She didn't give him the money voluntarily for $81,000. It turns out it was just for his drug habit. Eric Paul Johnson, there he is. And again, on the Mark Thompson show booking photo meter, I want to give him a five. Yeah. Once again, I think very, you know, pretty good. He looks okay. Yeah. Um, he was reportedly reported missing by his wife after he was allegedly being held for ransom by this Mexican cartel. The, uh, wife said that she returned home from work, got multiple messages from an unknown phone number demanding various sums of money. He uh, apparently led the woman to believe that they were uh, being blackmailed, claiming that a man named Troy was stepping in to help them. Hmm. Hmm. Um, yeah, a man named Troy. I don't know. Uh, anyway, and he had it's quite the story. Messages said that this guy who you saw, Johnson, would be hurt or would not come home if his wife did not send the money to this cash app account, to Johnson's cash app account. Here's one of the messages. It said, I'm running from whoever your husband sent after me in our business. It's only a matter of time before they catch me. 500 now for my family, or again, things will happen. And then another, 500 now or buenas noches. Then another, better send 500 now or he won't make it to the wedding. Oh. Wow. 
Uh, he began frequently Ooh, disappearing. It's a wild idea, but it just might work. Yeah. Um, and so apparently he dropped out of sight a couple of times prior to this. This is kind of a move. And after the ma- ransom was paid, the guy showed up again. Um, and of course, there is another woman involved. He, when they looked at Johnson's phone, he oh. it revealed that he went to another woman that he was sexting with. Scoundrel. Um, yeah, while well, he was being reported missing from his wife. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. What? Eh, it's not pretty. Another, you have to respect uh, the hustle a little bit. He was he was <laughs> choosing every avenue to try to get that money. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did play every card in the deck there. Mm-hmm. Um, once you've been missing a few times, I think that move becomes a little less effective, though. That's my yeah. sense of it. But um, anyway... Um, Back to the action. A Florida truck driver is charged with moving $1 million in cocaine from L.A. to Indianapolis. Yeah, he's accused of using his trucking business to drive a $1 million worth of cocaine from L.A. to Indy. That's there gonna, he is. That's the the, the drug sniffing dogs at the uh, the stop the border stops. It's you like know? oh my god, this yeah. is like too much, right? Uh, Yenner Pena Machado. There he is, a forty one year old Miami resident, and on the Mark Thompson booking photo scale meter, I'm giving him a seven. I uh, yeah, really? I think he looks good. Yes. Oh, that's I a think he looks high. good. I yeah. think he looks good. He doesn't look angry. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he looks uh, looks strong and alert. Uh, he was arrested last week after Indiana State Police found around $1.1 million worth of illegal drugs while searching his semi-truck during a traffic stop in Putnam County. That's what it looked like. Mm-hmm. I was curious, how much is $1.1 million worth of cocaine? There it is in the picture. Yeah. Uh, the uh, there was a motor carrier compliance inspection that was going on, and that's why they opened up the truck to begin. My with. bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so wonder, the, what the, right. I wonder what yeah. he was thinking as he rolls into the have the truck check station. You know, like oh yeah. god, here it comes. So it's always interesting what what's going on and what gives these guys away. The uh, there's a pol- there's a commercial driver's license that was given to the cops when he was stopped and then documents saying that he was president of meteor express carrier so the trooper saw that he was supposed to be en route to morris illinois which is a suburb of chicago okay to deliver this refrigerated food that's the cover story all right so he was asked hey dude why have you driven nearly 200 miles in the wrong direction i mean away from chicago where you're supposedly being being you know expected to deliver this food and he said he was distracted by a phone call with his wife and plan to turn around at the next truck stop. So it's a, <laughs> you know, his story is pretty. Ooh, it's a wild idea, no, you, but yeah. it just might work. You have to say something, but it was not the story that worked. It's 70 pounds of cocaine, 45 oh. pounds of marijuana, and over $47,000 in cash. I mean, not a bad afternoon, but uh, it ended with his arrest. So uh, Good day, sir. Yeah. Leprosy is spreading in Florida. Leprosy is on the rise again in the U.S., particularly in Florida. The World Health Organization says 200,000 cases of leprosy occur every year worldwide and are often associated with contact with armadillos. You know, that's... What? Yeah, exactly. What are you Uh, doing with the armadillo? What? Thank you. Um, Yeah, uh, again... Are you licking it? Like, what are you doing with it? I let me just say that they are the sweetest, most fabulous creatures, and I don't understand why people would be anywhere near them. Why not just leave them alone? But of course, that isn't what happens. And uh, we're experiencing in the U.S. a creep upwards in the number of cases we have and infections that we have. They've doubled over the past decade. Uh, and um, the reality is, it's not just people who are exposed to armadillos, it's people who are exposed to armadillos and people who aren't exposed to armadillos in this country. Mm-hmm. So the uh, CDC said there were 159 new cases of leprosy in the U.S., uh, around a fifth of which were in Florida. And of the Florida cases, 81% were found in central Florida. So that research continues, and we we wish them well with uh, uh, the third is doing it. 
Dr. Emily Schopenhausen is out in front on that research. We can treat that now, though. I think used to be they'd send you to an island somewhere, but now there's medicine. Oh, my God, yes. Well, you know yeah. who's in, instrumental in that discovery of that treatment? Was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Emil Schaffhausen. Yeah. I mean, I don't make it up. The guy really was, mm. he's a great, great doctor. Thousands of highly toxic toads, dangerous to pets, are breeding in Florida. Your pet could die in as little as 15 minutes if it bites or swallows the invasive amphibians known as bufo toads, cane toads, or giant marine toads. Wow. There's never been anything like this. Yeah. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, cane toads were introduced into the state to control agricultural pests in sugar cane in the 1930s and 40s. So this is really the law of unintended consequences. Researchers believe the current populations resulted from escapes and releases by importers in the 1950s and 60s. So now you have these things running amok. The toads are right now found in central and southern Florida, generally south of the I-4 cor corridor. Uh, they release a milky toxin, the toads do, that sticks in pets' mouths, and before you know it, um, it's all over. So this is a problem. These toxic toads can kill pets and are killing pets in minutes. A Florida man dies after a Harley-Davidson motorcycle test drive goes horribly wrong. Yeah, what could go wrong, Albert? Police say that the guy was test driving a motorcycle at a nearby shopping center when he had a fatal accident. He lost control of the motorcycle that he was test driving and crashed into the exterior of a wall. I guess he's not buying that motorcycle. Well, he's not buying anything no. after this. I mean, this is Good a... Good day, sir! All right. The he victim was... Tra nothing! No, exactly. The victim... <laughs> and who's going to pay for that motorcycle? Um... The victim was transported to a local hospital where uh, he sadly was, uh, you know, succumbed to his injuries. Did he uh, was he riding high or what? I mean, mm, there was no information. He okay. was uh, uh, apparently a little challenged by the um, by the motorcycle situation by the yeah. Harley, and for whatever reason, he was uh, he was struggling. Uh, that is Friday Fabulous Florida, but we don't end this segment without picking a favorite. Mm. And we don't want to do it, but we have to do it. It is in the bylaws of this show. And so I will remind you of the stories that we've just shared. The beef jerky pistachio nut crazed man who walks past the shoplifting is illegal sign and shoplifts. He's behind bars. The Florida man accused of posing as a drug cartel captive extorting $80,000 from his wife to support his drug habit. It's pretty creative. The, the Florida truck driver charged with moving a million dollars in cocaine from L.A. to Indy busted because the cops said, what are you doing here in Indy when your papers <laughs> say you're supposed to be in Chicago? Leprosy spreading in Florida from armadillos and beyond. Florida's got the highest numbers on leprosy in the country. Toxic toads that are killing pets in minutes, breeding in Florida, out of control. The Florida guy dying after getting on that Harley Davidson for a test drive and running it right into a wall. This is hard. I am going first to Kim. What do you think, Kim? I am going to respond to Josh's question. Do toads count as alligators? Kim, how are you? I think the answer is yes. So oh my I'm God, going yes. with the bufo toad. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Great choice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Albert, uh, what was your favorite, please? Albert, thank you. I mean, this is a man who looks like he didn't get his beef jerky. I, that looks like, <laughs> yeah, he looks unhappy. I, I, I was thinking it was like, yeah, he didn't, at least he's like, at least give me a bite of one of these beef jerkies I was trying to steal. I like the beef jerky story. Great, great, great quote. And, uh, yeah, I, lo I just love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, uh, I, I think that's a great booking photo. It's very, uh, I'm telling you, it looks very Hitman-y. I mean, if we're casting a Hitman for a movie, that guy's definitely yeah. getting a callback. You know I mean? He's definitely getting a callback. I When he I gets think, out of jail, maybe he'll go to Hollywood. Yeah, he could. Yeah. Uh, 
there are plenty of uh, beef jerky uh, convenience stores uh, in in Hollywood. The for me, it's between that guy and the Harley thing. The Harley is just so. I mean, that you test drive a Harley and you run it right into a wall, killing it. I mean, it's just so. I know it's wrong, but that's so Florida to do that. I'm going to go with the uh, Harley Davidson test drive. All right. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, vote uh, in vote, vote or in indicate the your preference. Uh, we're using the polls for for Mark's Madness, so just please yeah. vote in the chat. Just tell us your favorites. I yeah, see a lot you. of favorites. Yeah, Harley. Here. Somebody else should vote for Harley yeah. Gordon. Beef jerky, pistachios make it funnier here by Josh. Yeah, Karen, I kind of agrees with you. What about the motorcycle guy? Yeah, uh, leprosy wins, says Brian. Um, Florida tries. Didn't want to share photos of that one during that story. Extortion, <laughs> fake cap captivity, drug addict. That's true. Um, Tom is right. That I, I was thinking about that. I was flirting with the with the stealing of the eighty one k from the wife. But yeah, if there was a machete involved, that's an easy winner. But there was that's no true. machete. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it needed a machete. That's a Friday yeah. Fabulous Florida for today. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. <laughs> Y'all come back now, here. Yeah? I'm uh, running behind. When does my... You're keeping an eye on Michael Shore, see if when he gets here? He's not yeah. here yet, right? Okay. Not yet. Okay, so uh, Albert, if you will, and uh, with your uh, blessing, I will um, uh, usher in the second hour of Mark's Madness. Then we'll do some news from Kim. And uh, life will go on with Michael Shore. Is that about what we're do talking about now? That's exactly what I wanted. So perfect. <laughs> Let's do it! Now, I can't believe it! Mark's Madness! Damn straight, I'm into it, man. We had a big one in the first hour and a big one now. You'll vote either for... Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Or you'll vote for... What? Oh, it's... Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Or you vote for... What? Mm hmm It's producer or what? Live for the rest of the show and then in the community section till midnight. Wow. Producer versus what? Those are both good. Yeah. these. Are, you know, this is what happens when you get into the Elite mm -hmm. Eight. And here is how the last hour ended up live. Good day, sir, with 53%. Chit, chit, chit with 46%. So anything could happen. And again, that voting continues until midnight in the community section of our YouTube channel. Smash the like button like a boss, Smash damn it. it. With your iron rod. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our show, and uh, you'll be able to check in on us occasionally because once you subscribe, the show is served in your feed, and that way you can, you can pop in. If we're doing something you like, you can hang out. If we're not doing something you like, you can uh, pop out. Mm, no hard feelings. Uh, Liz Reeves, come on, Liz Reeves. Always a happy Friday when I'm listening to Mark, Kim, and Albert. Wow, Aww, isn't that that's cool? Nice. Liz, uh, thank you for the 10 spot. Big shout out. Big shout out. In fact, I'd like to give you the first thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. The first thank you so, so much of the day, Liz. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Liz, indeed. Did you All see right, this uh, one earlier? We had one mm. from Lulu. I love my Lulu. Big yeah. shout out. Campaigning for chit, chit, chit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the five spot. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I, I say, Lulu lot... is actually in the top five right now in Mark's Spanish. She shot up the, in the past few days. Oh, so, Lulu. Yeah. Nice She's job, good. Lulu Lancaster. She's at yeah. the top of the leaderboard. I will say this Lucy McAllister, thank you for a couple of bucks. Yeah. Big shout out. If I'll just say this as an aside if chit, chit, chit goes down, I mean, so many people have picked Chit 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 to win the tournament that it would be it would turn things upside down, it's wouldn't it? Be a real upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will have to see. But again, you've got until midnight to uh, to vote. All right. Um, so Kim's news, and then sure on politics, Mark Thompson show. The Mark Thompson show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. 
Officials in Maryland are expected to provide an update very soon on recovery efforts after the Baltimore Bridge collapse. The largest crane on the East Coast arrived on the site of the fallen Francis Scott Key Bridge overnight. Experts say it could take a month or more to clear the tons of debris blocking the shipping channel into the normally very busy port of Baltimore. Governor Gavin Newsom announcing the state of California installing 480 surveillance cameras along freeways in Oakland. Standing alongside the road where one camera would be installed, Governor Newsom said he expects this to help the CHP fight uh, crime in real time. The new cameras add to those already in operation, which the governor says have helped the CHP recover 200 vehicles. Pope Francis is marking Easter week by observing traditional church ceremonies. The Pope washed the feet of women uh, inmates at a Rome prison during last night's Holy Thursday ritual. Catholics across the globe today observing Good Friday. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell says it won't be appropriate to lower interest rates until officials are confident that inflation is on track to the Fed's 2% goal. While speaking from San Francisco today, Powell was referring to the latest inflation data, which he said is in line with the central bank's expectations. Experts are warning people about fake eclipse glasses. Why would you make fake ones? The American Astronomical Uh, a society reminding stargazers to wear approved eclipse glasses on April 8th to watch the event and to make sure that they use only glasses specially made to block almost all visible light. On April 8th, the moon will pass between the earth and the sun, blocking much of its light for just a few minutes. And I should note, program note, uh, that on the Mark Thompson Show, we will have Professor Andy Fracknoy coming in on April 2nd to talk about the solar eclipse, where you can see it, how you can see it, and all these things. I also have a program note that Courtney and I have decided that we're going to see it. We're flying to go see it. So where are you going? Kim will be uh, on the air managing this whole mess by herself. Are you going to call in? That'll be, I'd, lo- I'd be happy to call in. Be happy okay. to. Uh, There's uh, never go been live. anything like this. Yeah. So it's uh, in, we're going to be in Dallas. We're going to be in Dallas, Texas, man. That's where it is. So, uh, you know, uh, that's one of the areas we uh, checked out the weather. We actually wanted to go to Mazatlan because the weather is likely to be better there, but it, there are no more flights. There are, no, there are barely any flights to Dallas. Mm. So we're flying and, you know, the, the whole thing is <laughs> dynamic pricing. The price of everything there, hotels, flights, et cetera, they're all hugely yeah. expensive. But Eclipse I think it's going to be... pricing. They know what's coming. I'm in the path of totality, says Josh. Where is oh. that, Josh? Or do you just mean you're mentally in the path of totality? I think what, he's what? In New, somewhere in New York. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Yeah. I hope the weather is good for you to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, the eclipse is a big deal. I think my daughter, by the way, including Ticketmaster, also also getting some of that money. In <laughs> there must somehow. be a way that Ticketmaster <laughs> <Somehow>. makes. <Yeah. laughs> my daughter, by the way, is in New York right now on a, a high school band trip. I just got a picture of the outside of Juilliard. So, oh, came, that's you know, very so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Your dog is so talented. Big things will happen with her. her Let's hope so. Fingers crossed. The not so big things happening, at least 14 people injured after a three vehicle crash involving an MTA bus. It happened uh, about, well, just after 3.30 yesterday afternoon in Lemert Park. A nine of the 14 people who were injured were taken to hospitals. Three suffered moderate injuries. Six are in fair condition. One of the other cars involved rolled onto its side from this impact. It's unclear what caused this crash in the Los Angeles area. A former executive has pleaded guilty to embezzling nearly $16 million from a school district in Orange County. $16 million? That's a lot not to be caught earlier than that. Yeah, I wonder how they, what happened? What was the scam? Mm, how did it happen? Jorge Armando Contreras was the senior director of fiscal services for the Magnolia School mm. District. Okay, it serves Anaheim it. and Stanton. Thursday, he admitted to taking money from schools he was hired to serve during the course of several years. Here's what he used the money for. I always love this part. My favorite part of the story. Yeah. He uses the millions of dollars to buy a home, mm-hmm. a BMW, mm-hmm. 
57 luxury designer bags, wow. designer clothes, shoes, Man. jewelry. Oh. You and- can buy a Movado watch <laughs> in Sam's. No, I don't think he was at Sam's. And eight bottles of luxury tequila. I mean, wow. that's pretty good. If you're going to, you know, embezzle yeah. 16 million, you at go for the luxury tequila. It. That's right. <laughs> he didn't invest it. It wasn't like sitting in some account somewhere. No, he was living the high life. Ugh. Contreras was hired to manage the Magnolia School District's finances in 2006. More than 80% of the district's preschool through sixth grade students are considered socioeconomically disadvantaged. I have to ask you, um, um, you need to send Michael Shore the link. You must have sent him a bad link or something. He says Uh-oh. I'm backstage and there's nothing. I get a, okay. I can send him a link. Yeah, oh, send please him do. That, Thank please. you. Yeah, okay. Apple is rebutting the Department of Justice's claim that the iPhone maker has a monopoly. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland compared Apple's dominance in the market to that of Microsoft in the 90s. Apple CEO Tim Cook says Microsoft controlled 90% of the market at the time, while today only 20% of global market of global smartphone users have iPhones. So you see, there's no comparison at all. No. Yeah. Gosh. We lost a superstar today it is uh mr gossett jr i have a picture of him a lou of gossett of him. jr yeah yeah i have here, a lou gossett jr story actually oh, which i he, may hmm, i wonder if i should an, tell it now well you yeah. should um this is officer ahead, and a first. gentleman yeah. where he was um he won the best supporting actor award the first african-american man to do so um he has passed away at the age of 87 lou gossett jr uh, again, age 87. Um, a wonderful guy. And I'll tell you a quick story about my um, crossing paths with Luke Gossett Jr. So when I got to L.A. initially, I was at the Emmy Awards, really excited to be at the Emmy Awards. And then after the Emmy Awards, there is this governor's ball. OK, so I was super excited to be at this governor's ball because now you're sitting with a bunch of people like Lou Gossett Jr., Mm-hmm. and you're able to interact with them, right? So Lou Gossett Jr. And, and myself and a bunch of other people, there had to be easily a dozen people at the table. We're at this immense table, I mean, one that could accommodate 12 people. And in the middle of the table was an enormous, I mean, the largest I've ever seen, like a truck-sized Lazy Susan. You know those round things that, yeah. you know, you go, okay. So you can push it to what you want on the Lazy Susan and get. So we're sitting there, we're, we meet, and, and Lou Gossett Jr. is on the opposite side of the table from me. And, and we all meet at the beginning, but you know, it's just too far to really have any sort of uh, interaction. And about 10 minutes into the sit down meal, I mean, I think, I don't even know if the salads had been served at that point. I turned, the, I guess they had, because I turned the Lazy Susan to get something for whatever it was, the salad dressing or the, whatever, the salt. And I see the Lou Gossett Jr. jump back. Oh. And there was a huge, giant, is it a stein of beer? Like, it's a huge thing. It was like, it was like a, a, a high-rise building size <laughs> glass of beer. And when I turned the Lazy Susan, something sticking off the Lazy Susan s- hit that beer, knocked it over, and it, it landed all over Lou Gossett oh, Jr. Oh, no. And so he jumped up, and I'm like so embarrassed, so... My mean, bad. Uh, I'm sorry. Right, melting down with apology. <laughs> and I run over there, and I've got napkin, you know, the all... And, and, napkins, and he was like the coolest guy. He said, oh, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I'm like, Why? dude, you're, he was, it, we're all in tuxes. So his oh, talks man. is just soaked with beer, oh. and he was the coolest guy. So he he was really tall. He was six foot four. Yeah, he was so talented. As hey, which one of you is Mark Thompson? Exactly. I'm surprised uh, they still invite you to these things. Later. <laughs> well, they don't. They don't actually. <laughs> that's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, that's my. I, I have another Lou Gossett Jr. story that's not quite. But but uh, we we crossed paths several times following oh. that, and he didn't. He had no recollection of that incident. Never did he said I because I, I told him the story. I said God, I didn't remember that happening. So very cool oh, guy. Rest in funny. peace. Yeah. yeah. This report sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. You can find a huge selection of coffees and amazing teas. It really is a treat just for you. 
and get your exclusive 10% discount for being a Mark Thompson Show listener by putting in Mark T at checkout in your little cart as you uh, are exiting there. It's you not get the a discount. little cart. Why do you say little it's, cart? Well, okay. It, it, it's, it's a, a cart. Because look at the size Michael of the Shore cart Michael Shore does in the not have a right. little cart. I didn't say that. Yeah, well, I'm, you implied it. You implied I'm that Michael Shore. I, in fact, I thought it was quite specifically you targeted at Michael Shore. You know he's coming icon up next. There. Look at the little icon in the top right. It's a teeny tiny cart. Okay. It, it represents I'm, a. It represents a you large. Know, de- okay. Y- right. You really are. I think I you're mean, protesting I, too much. You're ch- ch- really right. taking this on in a whole direction that makes me wonder what's going on over uh, there. Well, okay. Anyway, uh-huh. you know, I, got, uh, I love it when you're angry. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Put in Mark T at checkout and enjoy the good stuff. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Mark Thompson Show. Mm-hmm. The Mark Thompson Show. It is our Friday show, and we're happy now to have... I was wondering what happened with Michael Shore. Turns out he was sent a bogus link. Oh, no. And I don't know why that... Whoever is, is producing this thing I, has no idea what they're doing. I don't know who to blame on this one. I feel like uh, it's... Um, I can't blame Michael. He, you know. Anyway, uh, he's forgotten more about politics than most of us will ever know. How about it for Michael Shore, everyone? You know, I met uh, Lou Gossett once, and uh, he told that story. <laughs> lazy susan some guy hits hits it and the beer goes flying yeah it was a um it was quite the uh it was quite the incident in my life you could see it landed in my memory but apparently yeah. it lose it just uh it kind of blended in to all the other stuff but yeah. um michael shore there were there was quite the uh there was quite the media event last night at Radio City where you had the yeah. ghosts of presidents past all show up there and uh, help out Joe Biden. I mean, and, and help out the cause of democracy was one of the things that was sort of uh, on the docket. I wonder if you could speak to the fundraising element. I think they raised $26 million, apparently. And Yeah, they did. Uh, they raised a lot of money. The Democrats are raising a lot more money. They're far outpacing the Republicans and it's events like that in New York. Look, if you are inclined to give money to a political party and you can have three presidents at the event, those are the events you're going to go and you're going to give money to. So it's a, you know, it's the the good fortune of uh, of being able to do that, uh, and and having uh, a robust uh, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton be there for the president. And I think what you learned is too that that um, that. Biden has the backing of the party, but I think he also has the backing of his former boss. Uh, And I think that that is going to be a big part of this. Barack Obama has been a little bit of the political wilderness uh, over the past couple of years by his choosing and by the natural fact that that's what happens to former presidents most often. And I think he's going to be a big part of this election. Uh, this You're going to see a lot of Barack Obama out in the field this summer uh, trying to drum up support for Joe Biden. You know, in these situations, we only saw a little bit of a clip, but Biden seemed pretty much all there. I mean, this idea somehow that he's, uh, you know, uh, I thought that was dispelled on some level, the idea that he doesn't know where he is or whatever he's mean. You know, that was dispelled, I thought, during the State of the Union. We talked about that on the show, I think, with you. And... Uh, and again, last night, he seems fairly quick and with it. And I, I, I don't, you know, I don't see him slowing particularly. And yet that no, seems, you know, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, I don't think this is a conversation that they want to have happen every single time the president shows up. to an event. <laughs> I I, see, okay. no. And, and but, but I, but it's, it's one that people have. Uh, so I think the more that he does and the more that people see him, uh, it, it's both good and bad because there's more of a chance for him to do what Joe Biden's done for a 50 year career in politics, which is make mistakes, stumble uh, and and say things that uh, he probably shouldn't have said. So when it happens and there is this cloud over him that's been put over him by his opponents because he's the president now, then then you sort of look at it a little more carefully than you would. It's uh, you know, he is uh, he's also succeeded in politics, I think we can safely say at this point, having become president, vice president, and a six-term senator, to the point where when he makes a mistake, you're looking for it. Uh, And I think the issue that they're trying to say in the Biden campaign is, yes, whether you think we should have an 81-year-old president president or not, or candidate, 
he is the president, he's fine. Uh, that's a separate conversation from whether it should be this 81 year old because he's the candidate right now. I, I, so I, I think it's, um, I think it's going to dog him throughout this campaign, but the more he does things like he did last night in the State of the Union, the more it will calm Democratic voters and younger Democratic voters, too. I was seeing that in the whole business of uh, the new branding of yourself in politics is the loudest voice in the room, the most extreme voice in the room, particularly on the House side, this stuff exists. Marjorie Taylor Greene is making the same rumbling she was making around Kevin McCarthy toward Mike Johnson, which is yeah. really, uh, let's replace him. Uh, at the same time, sort of to placate her, it seems as though uh, Johnson is throwing her a bone. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, Johnson's He's putting her in charge of the, of the, you know, the, of the impeachment uh, investigation, right? Right, but I think that, that that's also it can be looked at in a couple of different ways. It could be saying this makes us seem extreme. This makes us seem uh, as if we're distracted and only going after the politics of personal uh, assassination. Uh, so let's give it to Marjorie because they already think that of her. Let's distance ourselves from it. So uh, while it, it can be a looked at as kind of a promotion or a taking seriously, of Representative uh, Green, uh, I, I think that that there's also uh, in it a you know um, a, a, if she was the waitress, we give her the outside tables in February, you know, and, <laughs> I and I think that it's that kind of a thing. It's interesting because when you say that, it, it makes obviously a sense, and it also suggests that there's a, an effort to marginalize her, and yet she is such a loud voice. You know, it's a remarkable thing that her. Uh, her brand has really cut through. Well, she likes the attention and she gets it from Donald Trump and she gets it. Uh, you know, if you're elected as a representative, you're one of 435 and you can sort of amplify your voice as much as you care to do that. You can join with others to do it and you can do it on your own. But it's the fault of the media because wherever she goes, there are many microphones, including my own. You know, like I, sure. if she's there, I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her as a representative, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to cross the street just because it's Marjorie Taylor Greene. I, I, there are others that I would probably want to speak to more, but she does bring that attention. She has a caustic mouth. Uh, and so there are things that she's going to say that are going to get attention. And, and I, I think in terms of the partisan part of politics that that mike johnson has her right where he wants her he's trying to move toward the middle he is he is a lot like marjorie taylor green and that their politics probably align in in or certainly they did let's say two three four years ago now he's the speaker of the house so he has a different kind of job and he's he's got to herd the cats of the republican caucus and giving her something to occupy her also does the, the serves the function of keeping her away from some of the important and serious work they have to do until she shows up and says things about that as well and this is a great point you just made and and one i hadn't even really thought of is the way that mike johnson as loathsome as I think he is, has actually moderated his loathsomeness or his extremism because of, as you suggested, his role, his new role as, yeah. uh, as and, and I just want to remind everybody or just put a specific on it. Again, this uh, impeachment trial to which I was referring was the, is the Mayorkas uh, impeachment. And so he's now, Johnson has put her in charge of that. And again, that's sort of a dead end trial. That's why I love that the comparison that Michael just uh, suggested, which is, you know, the outside table in February is going to be your section. So she gets something, but it's really nothing. Um, so, uh, again, and it's being asked in the chat, why do you need to placate her? It's because you do want to hang on to that speakership, right? And she could be, make enough noise to uh, at least create a charge to remove him or to try to remove him isn't that why yeah, no question you also have to understand this is a this is a, a conference that voted to impeach Mayorkas. so there are people that are sympathetic to and it may even be johnson that are sympathetic to the the work of this impeachment and her positions i mean I, i'm not defending them or, or assailing them i'm just saying that's sort of the natural way that that it happened so it's popular within their caucus she people know that they have to sort of deal with her in a certain way and so if you don't placate her in a way that she can only come back to bite you 
You know, I was reading something this week about what Americans uh, vote on, you know, and because so much is made of the economy and how people vote the economy, they vote their pocketbook, which has always traditionally made sense. But even as an economy starts to come back and there's even talk of dropping interest rates and you see that we're doing better as an economy than any other economy in the developed world coming out of COVID, uh, it doesn't seem to cut through the, you know, the messaging, the, the polling, whatever you want to talk about. None of it seems to uh, reflect that, um, well, that the Democrats are getting traction on this uh, uh, issue. So anyway, to the, yeah. what I was reading about, which was that people have now kind of morphed into, and you're just the guy to ask about this because you're out there at these rallies and you're, uh, you really talk to more people probably who represent uh, both a moderate uh, sense of the other side, an extremist sense of the other side than anybody else I know. People are associating politics with identity, with personal identity, with ego. And as a result, it's very hard to move them off of wherever they are. Now, you do talk to some extremists, but I think you also cross-pollinate with those who aren't as extreme. Can you give me your take on politics in the modern age now? Well, in terms of what, I mean, l listen, everybody, are you talking about the the, the, the egos of, of voters themselves or the yeah, egos? Yeah, the egos of yeah. voters themselves, right? Yeah, and, and so I, I think that, first of all, it's very difficult. The more divided you become, the more you're forced to take a side. As tribalism sets in, You, uh, it, it feels to many voters like you just have to either be absolutely tribal or or just sort of sit this one out. And, and that's why... So many reporters are skeptical of the independent voter. Uh, I think the independent voter is a much more dying breed than we give it credit for. However, I do think that there are many Republicans who are very soft on their uh, on their support of Donald Trump. And I think that there are many in the constituencies that Democrats count on that are not motivated necessarily, not that they're going to come out for Trump, but getting voters out to vote at all in an election uh, like the one that's coming up in November is going to be difficult. So I think ego seeps in in that way. I also think that where there's, you know, I don't know that I buy it, uh, the ego thing as much. I, I do think that people um, are skeptical on the Republican side now of the power of their vote, because so many of them in polling think that the last election was rigged, even though we know it was not. Um, and, and so if you, I think being powerless and having egos run run at each other, they, 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 don't, uh, they don't jive really well. But I, I think that in terms of um, knowing if you are a very passionate voter, knowing that your work in in terms of your candidate uh, can raise your esteem in your community, well then, yeah, I think that that's where ego comes in. I, I don't know. I think the modern voter is still thinking about their pocketbooks. Nobody even says pocketbook anymore. Women say handbag, <laughs> men say handbag, but but they, you know, they are thinking about the cost of living. They're thinking about, I mean, I, I think it's the loaf of bread voter this year uh, from what I've been able to tell people say, I can't believe a loaf of bread is still as expensive as it is uh, since Joe Biden took office. Well, it, it predates that, right? It goes back into the sure. Trump administration as well. But I, I think that's where you sort of touch the old time voter. I don't think much has changed, Mark. I don't think that we're in a, a an evolution of how we look at our vote in America. Not enough people vote. Um, and I think the people that do, do it for the same reasons they always have, personally. A uh, loaf of bread is more delicious under a Biden administration, though, wouldn't you say, even though the price is the same? Well, it, it is, yeah, unless, you know, uh, yes. <laughs> this is the Happy Meal. Uh, Mark uh, says champagne. A Happy Meal is like $10. What's so happy about that? I mean, I don't know what the Happy Meal costs. I get it. Things cost more. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. you know, but uh, uh, my question was really... was if, you're, if your happiness is derived from a Happy Meal, maybe... Yeah. Maybe well, there are other directions. Or so, maybe that's a great how much one is and how much it ought to be. But what, what that person who wrote in is saying is exactly the same thing, right? Is it, that's their loaf of bread and that's the, yeah, right. The, exactly. That's, that's their loaf use, of bread. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, look, there's some other stuff going on and it's interesting political gamesmanship. And I wonder if we can just visit it quickly. Uh, the Republican um, passed a bill in Kentucky that takes away the governor, who is a Democrat, okay, takes away the governor's ability to appoint a replacement for Mitch McConnell for the Senate seat um, if there were a vacancy uh, from Mitch McConnell's seat. 
normally it's the it's a it's a gubernatorial responsibility to appoint a successor, right? right? It, it is. I mean, that's how it has always been traditionally, and 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 the Constitution requires that a governor appoint or the state appoint. I don't know that it's the governor. The state appoint a replacement. You cannot do that in a House race. You have to set a presidential, a, a special election. But in a Senate race, you appoint the senator. And, you know, it's when you have uh, dual party control. So you have the Republican House in, in Kentucky, the Republican legislature and the Democratic governor. This is how they try and sort of cut the knees off uh, from under a Democratic governor. It may set a precedent. People have been upset about it in the past. I don't know how it would be treated. I mean, this is a question for a lawyer or a constitutional lawyer more than that. It is I don't know how it would be treated constitutionally and whether or not even that legislation were to pass, um, you know, unless they say, well, the legislature is going to select this govern the, this replacement and not uh, the governor. I, I don't know the, how, how well that will do. Well, it's interesting because uh, uh, they did pass legislation, but he, the governor has to sign it, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and the he will, and this year will veto it. it yeah, yeah, exactly. So it'll take two thirds in their legislature to actually get it through. They want to, at least in this existing bill, they want a special election. That's what they're saying. Right. They don't yeah. Want to yeah. But in. that's not see, that's what they can't do. I mean, the legislature, I and again, I'm going to grain of salt this because I'm not the right person um, for this necessarily. I, but but what they're what they will try and do, uh, what they might be able to do is say that the legislature itself could select that replacement. But I don't think a special election is um, is can be called uh, in a Senate election uh, or a Senate vacancy. I think the Constitution itself says the state has to decide it in whatever way has to be appointed. Anything to watch in the week ahead, Michael, besides my truth social stock soaring for yet another week? And No, I'm looking... so I'm so proud of you. I'm so impressed. Yes, and I thank you. I can't thank wait you. till you buy dinner. Um, yeah, I, there's never been anything like this. There really hasn't. No, there really uh, has never been. Anything like... I mean, no, I, I think the things to watch right now are you know, I think it's time to start paying attention to some of these Senate races, seeing where the parties are spending their money, uh, seeing um, who becomes vulnerable and, you know, uh, what issues are coming. I mean, housing is an issue. I think Jerome Powell, you know, the Fed saying, well, we're not going to do it this time. We're going to lower them soon. But Powell then coming out and saying, well, we don't really have to lower them soon because things actually look kind of good. Uh, we're, we're stable. That that doesn't create confidence in an economy. And I think that you're going to see people talking about that and trying to press the Fed uh, into doing something or being a little more decisive and a little less soft on those sorts of things. But no, I mean, in terms of the electoral stuff that I'm following, I, I think we start to see soon how uh, Trump's schedule is affected by it. He's got two events next week in the Midwest, but th he's also going to be going on trial pretty soon. And uh, he, he had a good day and a bad day the other day when his bail was lowered or his his appeal uh, money was lowered. But at the same time, they didn't change the date of his uh, hush money trial in New York. And then, of course, we'll wait to see what the judge in Atlanta says about whether or not that case should be dropped as Trump's lawyers asked for it to be yesterday. So I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, the the whole backdrop of the trial and trial docket schedule, it, it's all going to become more relevant in the next couple of months so yeah you know, and we'll, we'll see if it is relevant though i mean that's that's the thing yes it becomes more relevant but you know in the in the sort of era of nothing matters right does something as big as this even matter no exactly alice in wonderland is where we are so but i mean yeah. it'll it'll be relevant to his uh travel schedule maybe i'll say that Certainly, yeah and his <laughs> uh, ability to be yeah to be everywhere at once mm -hmm. um love watching your stuff i know you've, you've gotten this kind of virality through all of your stuff, uh, attending the uh, right. these various uh, rallies well, you and talking. Can't get in virility, get it in virality. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a ding ding somewhere uh, in there. Uh, Michael, uh, we adore you and we look forward to the next time. Thanks. Michael right. Shore, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. The Mark Thompson Show. Well, it is uh, typical on a Friday. We are overstuffed. I love it. We're overstuffed with good stuff. And we are in the middle of what is a now, special a showdown. Mark's Madness. Yeah. You're going to vote for only one. Only one can go on to the next round, Kamish. 
You're either voting for whoever is reducing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Or you vote for what? Mm -hmm. It's producer. Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Or Oprah. What? Yeah. It's producer or what? You can vote right now in the comment section. And then until midnight tonight on the YouTube channel community section. So, um... I guess the community section now has the first hour, which was good day, sir, and chit, chit, chit. At the end of this hour, when the show ends, Albert will put live up to the community section this that we're voting on now, which is the... What? Right, or the producer. Whoever is producing this thing right. has no idea what they're doing. So you'll get one or the other uh, in the community section. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Late to the party, S. Jones, but welcome. Mark's Madness well underway. Danny says something which I think there might be some truth to, which is no judge has the spine to hold Trump accountable. And this is in the never-ending attack that Trump has for those who are presiding over his legal situations. Well, and I don't know how many times you can attack a judge's daughter before he finally says, you know what, pal? Contempt of court. Off you go to jail. Well, he's taken to social media again, has the former president, as you're aware, second time in two days to attack the daughter of the judge who is, as I was mentioning, overseeing his criminal trial in New York. On Truth Social, he wrote that the judge's daughter is a rabid Trump hater. He also called for the judge to recuse himself. And he says that the judge is totally compromised, should be removed from his Trump non-case immediately this is a quote his daughter is a rabid trump hater he mentioned her by name by the way i just didn't mention her name who has admitted to having conversations with her father about me and yet he gagged me hmm. so um it's um very hard to jail him just to speak frankly right and he likely won't be put in jail. He, I think it's right, whoever said in the chat, essentially, that no judge has the spine to hold him accountable. Danny, I think, said that, yeah. Um, it's more than that. You create a political firestorm, and you know you created it as a judge. I think it's a very, you know, it's really a tricky situation. Um, it that seems said, you know, we are a country of laws, supposedly, and uh, I'd like Judge Judy to be the judge in the <laughs> Trump case. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't want to hear you. Yeah, that would be. Man, Judge Judy be strong in there. Now, Judge Judy is not a, uh, she's not a, is she a, I don't think she's a Biden supporter. She's not a, but she's really not a Trump supporter. I think she was, mm. wasn't she for Nikki Haley or? Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was she's, a Nikki Haley person. Yeah. Yeah, she's retired now. She is retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's now in her chambers full time. She's not That's actually right. on the bench any longer. Okay. Yeah. I she's hung up her robes. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. She's uh, signed the de deposition for the last time. Trevor Star in Hollywood hits us with a twenty, and I want to say thank you for the super chat, Trevor. Big shout out. My son had a great time in Vegas for his twenty first birthday. Here is <laughs> one percent of what I won. Wow. I'm a big fan of yours, but yeah. I like you about 1% as much as I like my son. <laughs> Big shout out. Well, thank you so much. $20. It means yeah. now what's 1%, Michael Snyder? If, if that's $20, that means that he won $2,000. Is that right? Uh, hang on. Hang on, Michael. I have to do this. Go ahead, Michael. I, I, I've never been very good at math. I'm all about words and ideas, Mark. I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. I can't believe I opened your mic to hear that. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, good day, sir. Uh, I thought you had something to add. That's why I opened your mic. Um, anyway, I believe that's right. Uh, 4 dollars from Debbie. Big shout Big out. Big shout out. Whoever votes against Chit 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 does not know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Well, this is a uh, this hour. Uh, we are in the middle of no idea or what? Yeah, or what? So you vote for producer, no idea, or Oprah's what? In the first hour, we had Good Day, Sir, versus Chit Chit Chit. Now, again, that's still going on. That voting until midnight in the community mm -hmm. section of YouTube.
But uh, that's where we sit. Croquet film. What up, Croquet film? Big shout out. Big shout out. What do you want to do here, Albert? I mean, I'm, um, I've got, Albert, thank I've got you. the culture blaster. I don't mind running a little bit late. That's not a problem. We can spill over top of the hour. You want a little Kim headline stuff and then the, uh, the culture blaster? Yeah, headlines with Kim, and then we could um, get straight to uh, the culture blaster. All right. Headlines with Kim, and then straight to the culture blaster. Smash, smash the like button if you with would. your iron rod. Yeah, smash the, uh, the like button with your iron rod. And uh, we continue. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. Former President Trump is expected to raise $33 million at an upcoming fundraiser in Palm Beach. Next Saturday's event will be hosted by a hedge fund founder, according to The Hill. President Biden brought in $26 million in his star-studded Radio City Music Hall fundraiser featuring former presidents Obama and Clinton. That was last night. President Biden says he will never ever stop working to free Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. The American journalist was arrested in Russia a year ago on espionage charges, which U.S. officials say are baseless. President Biden in a statement said Gershkovich risked his safety to shine the light of truth on Russia's brutal aggression against Ukraine. Today's Wall Street Journal has uh, at least half a page of blank space where they say that his writing should be. Former Connecticut Senator Joseph Lieberman is being laid to rest after funeral services today in his hometown of Stamford. He died Wednesday Wednesday at the age of 82 in New York City due to complications from a fall, that according to his family. An additional memorial service will be held, they say, at a later date. They have this people mover project uh, scheduled for Los Angeles International Airport delayed likely until late 2025 now the completion date was originally 2023 that didn't happen got pushed into 2024 but according to the los angeles times the strained relationship between the airport and the contractor has led to the project's bond rating being downgraded in addition there are unresolved negotiations and unsettled payment disputes just some of the reasons why people mover already has 96 percent complete but will not be ready for passengers until october of next year what a mess godzilla x kong the new empire off to a very strong start at the box office it's the fifth film in the monsterverse franchise and it made 10 million dollars from thursday previews it's expected to pull in between 50 and 55 million dollars in its debut weekend so we'll see what uh mike michael snyder has to say about godzilla x kong this report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. If you call them at 925-699-4576 and say, smash it with your iron rod, call Rich out at the vineyard. Again, 925-699-4576. Smash it with your iron rod. And you get 10% off of your order of really good wine. So enjoy that from Tenuta Vineyards and The Mark Thompson Show. I'm Kim McAllister, and this is The Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Smash it with your iron rod. Morning. The Mark Thompson Show. Mark Thompson. Don't talk to me that way. Hey, which one do you use, Mark Thompson? What? That's not fake. That's real. It's fantastic. There's never been anything like this. We've never seen anything like it before. Nobody has ever put something like this together that I've ever seen. Have you ever seen anything like this? There is nothing in our history that quite compares 
to this. I have a busy Big week. shout out. Receive the rod of equity and mercy. What can you tell us about the scene? I did everything right and they indicted me. I misspoke. Hey, my man. It's George Santos here. I don't think you should apologize for how you feel. Did you really just do that? Good day, sir! Very impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. Only thing more impressive than that, than that, I thought, succinct and yet powerful recounting of the day's headlines from Kim. The only thing more powerful is what we're in the middle of now, which is... Now, I can't believe it! Mark's Madness! It's the greatest time of year, my friends. Maybe Christmas, maybe Easter, depending on the whole religious thing. Okay, don't mean to insult it or in any way. Maybe Fourth of July. Don't mean to seem unpatriotic. But next to those things, right now we're in the middle of it. You either vote for... Whoever is reducing this thing has no idea what they're doing. Or you vote for... What? Yeah. Producer or Oprah what? Good luck. And then, as I say, already in the community section of our YouTube channel... We have a live vote going on. It'll be going on until midnight for both sets of competitors. It's like the Super Bowl. It's that quality of electricity and dynamism to all of this. But now, without any, is there anything else I need to attend to, uh, Albert or Kim? No, I think we can uh, continue. I'm going to uh, welcome him in. This guy stops in on Fridays when it comes to music, when it comes to movies, television, whatever it might be. He is without peer. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael Snyder, the great culture blaster. Nice to see you, sir. Wow. Hey, uh, welcome to Mike's Madness. Come on, let's get serious yeah, about I see. it. <laughs> anyway, hey, now I want to wish everyone a peaceful and contemplative Good Friday. Oh, that's sweet. Wait, wait, wait. Good Friday? It's a great Friday. I feel so good. I actually have an appointment at, at my pedicurist to get my feet washed tonight. Oh, in, uh, in honor I, of I, oh good, because the, it's, good a, Friday. it's a Jesus thing. It's a Jesus thing. I love it. I love Jesus thing. Hey, uh, um, Sunday is is Easter, sure. and so the big question is, where are my peeps at? I, mean, oh, I get it because of peeps. I mean, That's seriously, funny. peeps. Yeah, I love yeah, peeps. I get it. Uh, anyway, go ahead. You know, all, Kim yeah. warmed us up. For Any more? Any more Easter material? Or you just don't get it. Do you? I, don't, I, don't, you don't. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Hey, the well is dry. I'm okay. telling you right now. All right. Um, uh, Kim warmed us up for the movie reviews uh, by bringing up Godzilla XCOM. Oh, I'm glad Empire. you're doing the Godzilla. Okay, go for it. Well, uh, by the way, Godzilla X-Kong, I think it means Godzilla times Kong, but it could have been plus Kong. I mean, anyway, let's get to the details. Do Go Godzilla and Kong actually meet each other in this uh, offering? They uh, meet for coffee. Uh, <laughs> OK Cupid has teamed them up somehow, and they find a lot in common. Wow. Uh, what? A, a, uh, okay. a number of decades ago, when I was a kid, and Japan's series of Godzilla movies were getting sillier and sillier. There was a toy called Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Do you remember Sure, that? I've got a Rock'em Sock'em uh, in this house somewhere. Okay, it was a plastic device, for those who don't know, with two small mechanical uh, lever-controlled robots in a boxing ring that you and your friends could manipulate to simulate a fight. Absolutely. So as I recall, it was fun for a few minutes, and then the novelty wore off very quickly. <laughs> Uh, the new blockbuster, Godzilla X-Kong. Same the deal. New Empire is essentially that, only done in elaborate CGI animation for the big screen with, with some live action performances of a sort by notable actors such as Rebecca Hall, wonderful actress, daughter, I believe, of Peter Hall, the great theater luminary in England. Mm. Uh, Dan Stevens, you loved him on Downton Abbey and, and oh, sure. uh, you know, Legion and various other projects. And uh, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, terrific actor. And this must have cost many, many millions to make. So continuing 
the American-made Warner Brothers legendary MonsterVerse revolving around a secret organization called Monarch that monitors giant monsters that have somehow shown up on Earth. This is, as Kim pointed out, the fifth feature in this loose franchise that began with Godzilla in 2014. Went, went ape with Kong Skull Island. Kong Skull I Island. Loved I get it. it. I get in 2017, got kind of lizardly again. Oh with my God. 2019's Godzilla Jeez. King of the Monsters, then yeah. pitted Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, and cities were destroyed. Money was made. And now we have Godzilla wow. X Kong, the new empire. Wow. Uh, and this is their new hope. Uh, kind of. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. This was directed by Adam Wingard, and it is a nearly nonstop slugfest with a slew of realistically computer animated creatures that are mostly battling one another in the hollow earth. A brightly colored, uh, I guess, dimension, a land beneath the surface of our world. So the action is fanciful, to say the least. It's uh, it's as wild a ride as a Disneyland e-ticket attraction and has about as much plot, actually. Um, although it's entertaining in a cartoony way, especially if seen in IMAX, it has none of the character development and intrigue of recent MonsterVerse-adjacent TV show, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, which I endorse heartily. Um, at the high point of these Monarch movies is still uh, Kong Skull Island, which does not feature Toho Studios' superstar, a skyscraper-sized radioactive dino lizard, and actually spawned a very good animated series on Netflix. And as good as the renderings of Godzilla are in these Warner's legendary movies, the recent Japanese production, Godzilla Minus One, is as good in the CGI effects department, leaving uh, Japan's traditional man-in-a-rubber-suit Godzilla in like the radiation-infused dust, and way better as drama and social commentary. At this point in the series, Kong rules and protects the hollow earth, and Godzilla protects nature and even mankind from threats on the surfaces of uh, our planet. But another giant ape wants to wrest control of hollow earth from Kong. So we Wait, have, there's a second uh, giant yeah, ape? This oh. is, we have a tag team wrestling match. Well, did we know about the second ape? No, no, he's new. This is a introduced. new character. Apparently, yeah. he has his own little tribe of giant apes in the hollow earth. What? What? Okay, kind of, yeah. You remember tag team wrestling? We went from Rock'em Sock'em robots to tag team sure, wrestling. Sure, of course. So imagine Kong and the ape interloper fighting with wow. various other beasts involved. And of course, wow. the science is ridiculous. It sound like it is underpinned by science. No. Godzilla may put his previous animosity towards Kong aside because there's a bigger threat here. Oh, sure. The enemy of my enemy it, is that my is friend. Exactly, there's even a sort of cameo by a very famous kaiju who I shall not name. Uh, okay, it's Mothra. Anyway, okay. let's not forget the humans. Uh, even if the screenplay, uh, the screenplay almost does forget the humans, but you've got Hall as a kindly scientist with an adopted daughter who can speak to Kong. Yeah. You've got Stevens as a daredevil pilot in a whole Iron Shirt, always a great character note, and Henry is a monster-obsessed uh, podcaster. These guys are all surely happy to cash a paycheck. If you ever wanted to see a sleepy Godzilla curl up like a cat and doze off in one of the most famous landmarks in the world, this is your movie. <laughs> I mean, that is if you're not dozing off yourself by the time it happens. Uh, the right. bluster is overwhelming, but, you know, a lot of that can kind of become... Uh, wearying. Uh, yeah. It is in theaters where it's meant to be seen, if at all. Wow. Well, you uh, you love a lot of the elements. But it sounds like you're not uh, much of a fan of the way it all came together. Uh, well, let's turn to something a little more human. Yes, sir. Wicked Little Letters, which is purportedly based on actual events. And we've got a couple films like that, and they're both directed by the same director, strangely enough, and both coming out today. Wicked Little Letters is a period movie set in a quaint English seaside town during the not-so-roaring 20s, if the repression on display is in any way accurate. This is a comedy of sorts with a mystery involving the identity of an anonymous prankster who is sending profanity-filled letters to a variety of local residents among them, a faint-hearted spinster, Edith Swan, played by Olivia Coleman. She is uh, in all the good stuff, huh? Um, her righteous brother, Edward, played by the great Timothy Spall of many, many wonderful films. Mike Lee's repertory company, he was in Harry Potter and such. And their elderly mother, who are all appalled at these absolutely filthy contents of uh, the missives. So the prime suspect, as is the case in you know, situations like that, uh, is the uh, libertine young woman 
down the block. She's named Rose Gooding. She's played by Jesse Buckley, the great Jesse Buckley. Anyway, with such stellar actors as Coleman, Buckley, and Spall on board, this should have been a much funnier and less forced farce than it oh, is. Oh, you didn't like it. Well, Interesting. there are moments. It, it's always a joy to watch the performers and, and a selection of other top-notch UK thespians in the cast and watch them do their stuff. The scenes with Coleman and Buckley elevate the whole affair and there are lively enjoyable scenes and some chuckles here and there but the more like frenetic moments aren't that amusing the vulgarity that's meant to be hilarious loses its charm and the movie's final revelations do not sizzle they just kind of fizzle out uh there's a pretty obvious subtext here about the oppression of women in the era uh, and the area including the shaming of uh, the free-spirited folks as embodied by buckley's character that's okay. In fact, okay about sums up my opinion of Wicked Little Letters. Did it need more wickedness? Maybe. Or maybe <laughs> a uh, smarter, less heavy-handed script. And I, I won't say return to sender on these letters, but I expected better. Uh, Wicked Little Letters was directed in very professional fashion by Thea Sharrick, who fared better with another new release that I will discuss shortly, one that's more of a, a populist feel-good project. Meanwhile, Wicked Little Letters is in select theaters. Wow. Man, I thought we were going to go with a great review for that when I saw Olivia Colman, and we end up with sort of a tepid review. I know. I think Jesse Buckley was also nominated for an Oscar. Uh, Coleman, Oscar winner. Buckley nominated. No. Nope. Well, one, once in a while, one's not going to be, you know, Oscar worthy. It is not terrible. No, Boy, I get it. It's I not bad. I can see the pull quote on, the, uh, on yeah. the posters now. Michael Snyder, Mark Thompson show. It's not terrible. Now, you think if I do an edible, I would enjoy it more? Is that Apparently, this is one? you'll enjoy everything more with an edible until about halfway through when you'll <laughs> doze off like <laughs> Godzilla in a certain famous uh, monumental what? landmark. All right. Okay. Uh, driven by an absolute banger of a performance from Caleb Landry Jones, Dog Man is the latest movie and one of the most intriguing from the audacious French filmmaker Luc Besson, uh, whose generally bold output includes such landmarks as Leon the Professional, which, by the way, stars Jean Reno and was the first major screen role for a 13-year-old Natalie Portman. Oh, is that? that right? I didn't know that. Uh, the Fifth Element with Bruce Willis and La Femme Nikita with French leading man Checky Cario. So Dog Man, written and directed by Besson, is occasionally kind of half-baked, but damn, it has some serious bite and style, largely thanks to Landry Jones as the title character, a man named Douglas who, after suffering horrible abuse as a child, including a crippling injury, has built a life for himself and found soulless and unconditional love from a loyal pack of canine companions. Wow, good for that. The dogs not only provide comfort, uh, they're kind of like furry avenging angels that can be wielded by Douglas to right perceived wrongs. Oh. This crusade could uh, definitely blow back on him with serious repercussions. So over the course of Dog Band, Landry Jones flexes some serious shape-shifting skills, especially in regards to a certain part-time job that Douglas takes. The actor's expression of the pain Douglas has endured and the fortitude that the character needed to survive against the odds is pretty astonishing. After the splashy qualities of his best and most lionized work, Besson went down a darker and more haunting path with Dogman. I think it paid off. And again, Caleb Landry Jones gives a hell of a performance here, probably the most memorable and moving in his career to, uh, so far. It may not be for everyone, but Dog Man is no dog, man. It's in selected Oh, uh, very clever uh, what you did there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm noting ding words along the way. We'll pick them up at the end of the uh, Lionize is one of them. Um, so uh, it's nice that you did like it, though. I did. Um, I uh, did. Yeah. I, hey, we got one of our favorites lined mm -hmm. up here for the next review. At this point, Liam Neeson has oh, no need to say I that he has it. a certain set of skills because yeah. we know this is he a classic has them. Mark Thompson time waster. Right, yeah. and guess what? This is not the recently classic 
Liam Neeson time waster because he's made some crap B movies. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, uh, he's, I, guy's got to pay for his summer yeah, house. Yeah, hacky action films or action movies, as I like to Oh, that's to good. I like that. Well, for a change, he uses his skills in a more studied and atmospheric thriller than usual. This one set in Ireland during what appears to be the early 1970s when uh, the horrific political violence known as the Troubles were, as usual, threatening the placidity of the Sylvan land, the Emerald Placidity, Isle. I've got a ding right now. Sorry anyway, about that, uh, it's called In the Land of Saints and Sinners, and it features Neeson as ex-assassin Finbar Murphy, who mm. has worked for a surprisingly folksy fixer, but now wants to lead a quiet life in a remote County Donegal town. So Finbar isn't on a mission to save a family member like you know, we see Neeson do in some movies. Uh, and he isn't trying to get revenge on someone who wronged him, but he has a code of honor, and there are some affronts that he just cannot let slide. Uh, although it's not quite every time I get out, they pull me back in again. Finbar's guilt over the blood he spilled in the past certainly informs his desire to in some way atone for previous actions, and that makes for a wee bit of compelling drama. Uh, the cast is blessed by the presence of other renowned Irish actors, including Curry Condon from the Banshees of Inishirin and Ray Donovan and Better Call Saul. As you've never seen her before, playing the brutal, callous leader of an IRA terrorist cell. Get this, Jack Gleason, now in his 30s and unrecognizable from the days when he played the vile teenage King Joffrey on Game of Thrones. He is, you just can't believe it's the same person. He plays a younger hitman who admires Finbar. Um, Kieran Hines as an honorable local cop, and the great Colm Meany from so many wonderful movies, including Layer Cake and, of course, the Star Trek franchise. Here he's the aforementioned fixer. Um, Neeson previously collaborated with director Robert Lawrence on the 2021 film The Marksman. I think In the Land of Saints and Sinners is a better movie with a kind of classic Western vibe, despite the 70s era and Irish setting. I endorse it. It's in theaters this weekend. Wow, very good. He likes it. He likes the latest Liam Neeson offering. And I'm surprised no one, all of all over you, you know, you do serve up these ding words. You're a writer. You're a hyper-articulate. Oh, here it is. I wondered why no one had noticed. Aforementioned is a ding word. Uh, yes, there really? We go, it, yeah. It's kind of a... It's 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 a no, let's I face see. it it's an it's a it's a highfalutin word aforementioned please yeah okay I got one for you um, that I really want to address because we mentioned the director previously uh, she's the director of uh, uh, the Wicked Little Letters uh, how about a feel good sports movie with a social services twist that would be. <laughs> <laughs> the Beautiful Game, which bears as its title the affectionate nickname uh, for soccer across the globe. So this is handily directed by Thea Sharrick, the same director who brought us Wicked Little Letters. The Beautiful Game is an exceedingly pleasant narrative movie inspired by a very real annual sporting event, the Homeless World Cup. This is an ongoing international street soccer tournament that features national teams comprised of homeless athletes who represent their various countries as they try to win the competition's championship. So the great Bill Nye plays, Oh, he's so good. He, he plays Mal. He's right. an, a renowned soccer scout who recruits the players for England's team in the Homeless World Cup. Each member of the English squad has a reason or reasons for their unhoused status, and we get to meet them and learn their stories as they travel to Rome. The most talented and troubled of them is Vinny, an uncommonly skilled striker played by Michael Ward, previously so good in the Book of Clarence and Empire of Light. And speaking of light, the beautiful game is lighter fare. Although there are a few twists to the tale, we sort of know where this is headed. Despite the formula, there is so much heart to the story. Nye, as you pointed out, is always so good. Ward exhibits so much star power as Vinny. And the ensemble around Nye and Ward are all so immensely likable that it ends up as a genuinely uplifting and non-saccharine experience. I mean, the struggles that the teammates face to turn their lives around, to redeem themselves, and to play the beautiful game in a fair manner, give the movie a richer texture. As it happens, the screenplay is the work of Frank Cottrell Boyce, who also happened to write a favorite film of mine, 24-Hour Party People, as well as Welcome to Sarajevo, Millions, uh, and The Railway Man. The fact that the Homeless World Cup is a real and empowering thing makes the beautiful game even more worthwhile to watch, and it is on Netflix. Wow, you really liked it. I'm so impressed by that review. 
Man. Uh is that does that bring us to the end? I think it might. I think if, considering time constraints and yeah, the fact and, that and Kim I, has stuff to do. I love a, a quick uh, reflection on what we've just heard. The beautiful game. You're seeing it up there. Bill Nye. And uh, is it Michael Ward? Michael Ward. Spells yeah. his name E-A-L, unlike the rest of us, Michael. Yeah, well, it's cool. It's a feel-good sports movie about soccer. This is a real cup, World Cup, the homeless World Cup. It's a real-life um, football tournament and that spotlights unhoused athletes around the world. And with all those great performances to which you've referred, Michael, Michael uh, has finished by saying he really likes it, and the beautiful game is in theaters. And it's on Netflix beginning tonight. Now, now. yeah, it's not in theaters. Go straight to Netflix. Oh, go straight to Netflix. All right. It's, it's theater-worthy. Okay. So I can do an edible and watch it on Netflix tonight. Do too. <laughs> In the land of saints and sinners is the thriller featuring Liam Neeson with a special set of skills that are finally not associated with trying to find his daughter or trying to settle some score. Give me back my wife. Michael says this is a special set of skills well applied in this new thriller. This is you a classic to... Mark Thompson time waster. No, yeah. no, it's, a, it's no. actually a good thing. It's not a time it, waster. It, this is, is a point. good thing. Okay, so the Get land in the land of saints and sinners puts together Neeson with a bunch of other cast members that really hang together well, a right. script that's really good, and Michael really recommends it. It's in theaters. Dogman is this weird, it sounded weird. It's a guy who has found a special bond with this pack of dogs is what I got. Right. And he's able to direct them to less than holy kinds of um, uh, uh, loyalties. Is that a fair way to put it? He's kind of, he wants to right wrongs and he wants to use the pack of dogs to do that. He'd like to be left alone with the dogs, but sure. he knows there's- We all do. There's trouble surrounding him and so. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he recommends it, Dog Man, and it's in theaters, right? Yeah, now. and it's from Luc Besson, of all people, Mr. Fifth Element, Mr. Femme Nikita. Yeah, very, very good pedigree. Wicked Little Letters with Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley, two uh, people who are always talked about at the highest levels of acting. Sadly, their acting wasn't enough to save this film, according to Michael Snyder. Wicked Little Letters is not great, not bad, no, but it's not really what he expected and perhaps what a lot of us would expect. It, it, it with had that kind moments, of... but it needed to have so much more. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, where they're uh, fighting under the earth to save the earth, and there's another... Uh, huge uh, Kong-like ape that enters the picture. It sounded like there was a lot going on. And Michael said, yep, there is a lot going on, and it's uh, too much going on, and it's just, uh, it gets busy and ultimately disappoints. Yes. Uh, you know. uh, you'd be better off watching Monarch Legacy of Monsters, which I believe is on Apple TV. Yes. Well, uh, I'm very impressed with the way that you've discharged your responsibilities today, Michael. You've certainly brought uh, the heat and... I've waited until the end of uh, Michael's segment for the ding words, uh, of which there were many. Um, I'm sure they were profuse. They were. And ding. Uh, I will, yeah, profuse would be uh, one of them. We ding uh, SAT type words on this show. So, and Michael just serves them up. We try not to ding them during the segment, it can be a little uh, distracting. But uh, you can see here all of the different words that have been libertine and thespians and frenetic and then another frenetic. It's the uh, uh, different spelling, which is it's actually a different word, but all right, it, it's passable. Um, audacious, um, fortitude, lionized, atmospheric, affront, atone. Wow. Well, you know, Mark, I use every one of these words in normal conversation. Yeah, that's why we can ding them, because they're not. you don't go out of your way to use them. No, it, Mark it, needs to back ding Snyder's prior verbiage. Oh it's true. So God. It's, verbiage. Verbiage. Yeah, yeah, there Isn't you go. is that a ding? Uh, I did not think you were a weed man, MT. Well, no, I really, it's a callback. I don't want to seem like I'm a stoner. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with being a stoner, to be honest. I, mean, my, I went to school with straight-A stoners. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. You know? My pal Scott was a wake and baker, and he was straight A's. Everything was amazing. Um, but uh, I refer to something that happened where I fell asleep during a movie, and Michael said, well, of course, you did. if you did an edible, you fall asleep. So now I always talk about an edible before yeah, seeing just, this movie. Just 
make it a quarter of an edible next time. Yeah, I, you're right. But that's that's where that comes from. Michael, we love you. Uh, you can find him. What's your latest publication? Uh, I will be joining Voice of San Francisco, a new online daily uh, with a, a focus on the Bay Area. But obviously, my stuff is going to have a little more universal appeal, I would hope. Hell yeah. The Voice of San Fr the Voice of the Bay Area. It's called Voice of San Francisco, Voice of San Francisco. and it um, debuts, I think, uh, April 15th. So while you're miserable about paying your taxes, uh, you can have your burden lightened by going to Voice of SF. Com. Love it. VoiceofSF.com. You can find the Culture Blaster here across social media as the Culture Blaster and he comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye-bye, Michael. Go Giants. Yeah. Right on, brother. Right on. The Mark Thompson Show. I don't know. I know we're, uh, we're running a little bit behind, but isn't that the fun of it? You know, yes, that's the spontaneity is. of it. That's the mm -hmm. that's the magic of it. No. Oh, I can't believe it. Mark's Madness. We're finishing up Mark's Madness, and I'll remind you, going down right now in the community section of our YouTube channel is a classic ma uh, matchup. That's right. You'll either vote for the producer, no idea. Uh, producer, no idea. Where is that? Oh. Whoever That's is producing one. this thing has no idea what, what they're doing. Or you'll vote for Oprah. What? Yes, so it's what? What? Or Whoever is producing this thing has no idea what, what they're doing. Yeah, so you'll vote until midnight tonight. There you can also vote for the first hour, which was like the Super Bowl, and that is the Good Day Sir. Good Day Sir! Mm -hmm. Versus... No, the chit chit chit. Where is that? Oh, I see. It's over here. Chit chit chit. Okay, so uh, chit 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 versus good day, sir. Good day, uh, sir. Only one can move on to the next round, so you can vote until midnight. And look at that, good day, sir. Uh, leading just by a couple of percentage points, mm. a few percentage points. Producer, no idea. It's uh, sixty percent to Oprah's what? Thirty nine percent. This I would consider an upset, Kamish. Producer, no idea. Getting 60% yep. of the vote over Oprah's what, I think is, uh, I'm going to call that a major upset yep. because what is picked by many certainly to go past this round. I mean, this is a, an extraordinary thing. Wouldn't you agree, Kamish? I agree, and it's it's at my detriment, too, because this is a disparaging drop against my, my abilities on the show, so I'm <laughs> even more disappointed. Yeah, I mean, weird. Albert's right. I mean, it really is a... How dare you people? Yeah, it's a way... <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you're angry. Uh, so, you'll vote. Th that voting is um, is not done yet, though. So, the producer, no idea, versus Oprah what, along with the other Good Day Sir and Chit Chit Chit, uh, until uh, midnight tonight. Producer, no idea, though, leading by a lot. I mean, what is that? 21 percentage points, something like that? Yeah. It's, so, uh, it's not looking good, but I, I believe the community voting is live right now. I did schedule it for actually 115, so one minute. It'll be it'll be live, so head over there and make sure you yeah. vote for Oprah What, everyone. Do something good. Vote for Oprah What to help Albert out. What? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. I want to quickly uh, see what else we have to do before I... The Mark Thompson Show. What else do I have to do, Albert? Do I have to do anything else? Kim, is there anything I need to attend to? Um, I think you've had a lot of people that are supporting the show that it's nice to say thank you. Uh, you that's well, absolutely. That's kind of what yeah. I'm talking about. Before I do, yeah. I want to say uh, apparently it's Chip Franklin's birthday today. Oh, and happy, happy birthday. birthday to Chip Franklin. Yeah. Um, yeah. The um, the firebrand of KG. I always thought that Chip was the firebrand. You know, yeah. like he'll say anything. He's a smack talker. He called Trump all these names and stuff. People mm -hmm. really and and. Uh, Chip's just great. You know, he comes yeah. on hot. I, he always comes on hot. So I, I love Chip, what he's doing. I think he's doing a lot of stuff for the Lincoln Project, and he has his own mm -hmm. kind of channel associated with that. But uh, more than anything, uh, wishing him a happy birthday. So very, very cool, Chip. Um, the Somebody can tell him that we wished him a happy birthday. I don't think yeah. he's a regular viewer. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else I need to attend to? Um, I'm, I'm here to attend. I'm an attendant. <laughs> No. You're very good at attending. I try to attend to those things that need attending. Yeah. Uh, Kamish, we have a couple of extra seconds here, but literally almost a couple of extra seconds. Anything you'd like to say in conclusion? You back on Monday, right? Yes. 
I'm back on Monday. I'm here all week. So if I look at the brackets, it's looking like the final four starts on Tuesday. And then our, I think our whole day, our championship will be a whole day of live voting as well as the, I'll let the voting go all the way up until the show the next day. So I love it. So next, next week, week, next week, Mark's Madness comes to a conclusion. Correct, Kamish? Yeah. Okay. Finally, there will be a, a crowned champion, I believe, on Wednesday or thir Thursday. I think Thursday. All right. I'm Shadow Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye bye. What a week, everybody. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. Bye -bye. Good Friday, Easter, etc. All of you who love that, we love you. Bye bye.